This is going to be you. Hey, nice to see you. Other than Betty, if I've hugged anybody in two years. Well, get a better one. We already did. I'm still a little not perfectly comfortable with right. Look at all this equipment you have. Lighting, lighting, lighting. Uh, this thing, this articulating arm. Where you want to go? I'll give you an honest answer. Oh yeah, that, you don't want to do that. First of all, are we are we already recording? I was curious if I should be interesting about this drink order or not. But I'll just be my boring self. What's chicory? Oh, uh, oat milk. Ooh. Yeah, I probably can't vape in here. Can I vape in here? That's a no, yeah. That's a no, Ricky. I honor a no. Ricky, this is, I mean, it's... It's both impressive and hysterical. The lights? Just the amount of equipment in here. It's We have one, two, you must have your own right dedicated here. three. Three cameras, is that it? Three cameras. That's okay, it. so a proper multicam shoot. <laughs> You've got one, two, three, four lights and a practical. Five. <laughs> Scoot. Blabbity blue, scoop D. Oh yeah! <laughs> you have these two mics, and then I'm now learning a room tone mic. I have so many mics and mic arms and stuff for oh my when gosh. things break or if I've had f a few people on and uh huh. <laughs> it, 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 do you find that? Do you find that you like? Do you, do you comb um, the internet looking for different products that might? enhance the experience for you no I, I feel like I could I feel like I could get you in exactly what I am by telling you this I go to the grocery store because I need barbecue sauce mm -hmm. I buy two yeah yeah because so same, I'm gonna same. run out yeah oh let me take this out you know what what do you have a retainer in Invisalign it, no it's for uh, it grinding myself. yeah TMJ dude I couldn't open my mouth past this last year Primarily in your sleep or in uh, durinial grinding? I'm assuming durinial means sleep and awake. Uh, nocturnal, durinial, I think. Daytime, nighttime. Are you doing daytime grinding? Daytime, nighttime, durinial, all the Oh grinds. my God. All oh my gosh. Let's try this. Now, uh, please explain to the uh, the viewer what this is because yeah. I've already forgotten. It's uh, I've explained to them before. I'm, I'm Bombas and Blue Bottle, you would think are paying me so much money because every it, podcast starts with it. Even after Monica's... Bombas. I cannot believe Bombas is yet to be a sponsor of your show. It will be, though. It will be in the next two to three weeks. And what happened? Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, we don't have the budget this summer to uh, take on new. But here's $100 in socks. And you know what I said? Awesome. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I Great. Do know, I do and know I'll use mean. it. Because they are tremendous socks. It's actually shocking I'm not wearing them right now. Because I truly do. Uh, like you, I wear them. Well, I think you wear them exclusively. Is that accurate? No. no. But, uh, yeah, I mean. For the sake of the show, you do. No, I, I, there are times, like today, I, I would have put these on anyway, but I did open my drawer being like, oh, fuck, am I out of Bombas? Because yeah. I, in a conversation yeah. happens. Yeah. But I wear, I wear my Bombas until I run out. Yeah, right. You know? when, yeah. I, when I'm out of Bombas, I have backup socks, but it's time to do laundry. Right. Yeah. C can I ask you a question? And, for if you didn't. Uh, well, I'm going to. Okay. And um, I, truly, th this is not. Uh, a criticism of any kind. This is an observation. I'm curious what prompted your move from the old apartment to this apartment. Well, there's something I wanted for a while, but I still would not have done had it not been for Betty. Okay. Um, I'd been there for a decade, so it's time to move. Oh, a that's, decade. Yeah. That's the smallest thing. Okay. The owners of the building's son oh. lived above me. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, worked above me. Worked. Because... She let him do construction from January to middle of July, and it was not during office hours. Even that wouldn't be okay. It was dreadful. Okay, so he he was remodeling his his unit. I don't. I mean, he was. I, don't, I can't. I can't imagine what was up there. Yeah, the joke I made, and people thought it was fine. Uh -huh. Was it was an ice rink? I mean, it was there was there was water being constantly poured off the balcony, oh. wetting my rugs. And you know, by the oh. way, we'll be right back. Hello. This episode is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Where you don't just have to go to sleep on the mattress, right? Does it? Un they understand what the implication is. Are you not supposed to do that kind of stuff? No, I think they like that. Some people think it's old-fashioned to still have sex on a bed, but that's that's the cl for me. And I don't know about you. I should ask you about this at some point. Yeah. And whether you're a side sexer or you like to sex on your back or sex 
uh, where Ben All right, but also just every everyone unique body and yes. everyone's unique sleeping style is accounted for by Helix. And Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders plus two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders plus two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Anyone who knows me knows I ain't wearing it if it ain't comfortable. I ain't wearing it. Am I saying that right? I'm not. I only wear comfortable clothes, period. Yes. My dad has been a Mack Weldon customer for a while before this. Right. Men's Basics. This is the place to go. And Mack Weldon has given our goblins 20% off their first order by visiting MacWeldon.com slash Tyso and enter promo code Tyso. Now, Ricky, do it in a British accent. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon, W-E-L-D-O-N dot com slash Tyso and promo code Tyso. Now do it with an Australian accent. Well, they get it. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. I have access to great rugs. Uh, but I had rugs ruined from them throwing buckets and buckets oh, really? of water. Yeah. I have a stab at that. The only part of construction where you would need copious amounts of water is maybe they're mixing cement up there. I guess. But what are they cementing? Other than my need to get the hell out of there. Form form kitchen countertops, maybe. I mean, which is a big undertaking. If he pulled that off and they were smooth and uniform, then the guy's a genius. Because I've, I've, I've been told it's really hard to get that perfect cement countertop. I just, cl- I, have a, I have opinions on that. Okay. And I just, I felt, and work with me because you're the guy. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm wrong. The reason I don't want to talk about it is fear-based. Okay. And it is... Like he'll hear it? Well, everything up until now is if he hears it, yeah, what are you doing with the water? Right. But the feelings and the thoughts that I was like censoring myself from would be like, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, start picking a fight you don't really want to be engaged in. Also, yeah, there was a lawsuit settled. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. We'll figure it out. If not, we'll bleep that and put in like Hold something on. racist. Y- you? Yeah. We're sued from this show? No, 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 no. no. Oh, thank goodness. Because I just, of course, got a pang of fear that i if you've gotten sued surely no, i'm I next. lawsuit against them for the inhibitable okay grinding that was being caused oh so you had to get litigious and it and it worked good oh my god yeah are you rich i uh you're not hurting i'm uh <laughs> well not since i met and i would love to give a shout out demersian shout out to dr demersian who i tried so much for my jaw he fixed it. Oh my God! So was that part of big? This? Pa- big pa- I mean, oh, well, that's I, part of the pain and suffering. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was. It's a bad mix for you. What's what? What is it? Uh, th- that noise upstairs and the activity Three with, in with the your with your condition that you tend to get into obsessive thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not I don't, a good I don't, I don't lo- think that that was it though. I, I wouldn't. That wasn't part of the. Uh, well, no, it didn't. It didn't give you. Uh, Autism. That's not what I'm suggesting. Oh, I thought you. Just I'm meant saying. I'm saying. If, needing if, to be funny if, all the time. If, no, no, no. If if you have Aspergers, uh, probably not ideal to live below a construction site. Yeah. I don't know why I'm. I'm just out on a limb yeah. guessing that. Yeah. Because you want you want you desire control, right? And order and like predictability in these things. Yeah. And just a God knows when it'll end above. It, it's it's got to be maddening. I, I gotta say this okay. that when we spoke with them about this stuff and the the whatever the term is for you know palms going back and forth, yeah, yeah, that was not part of it. Okay, I feel I I feel defensive that I need it has nothing oh, to do like with you, there's you, no Rick condition. It was the environment. It was the situation. Yeah, does I, that make sense? It totally does. Um, I think what you're arguing is that any normal and yeah person would expect far less racket above them especially when it's i'm just a adding pandemic. on yeah, what yeah. i know about you because we're not engaged in that arbitration or whatever yeah, yeah. this was arbitration uh, is what i was looking for okay. yeah <laughs> Aren't, don't you wish you had like a single deaf friend that you could call on facetime and go like is this arbitration because sometimes you think you stumble upon one that it has to be the asl symbol for something so first of all and i don't want to negate your fun thing i i don't like to make frivolous wishes or promises so i wouldn't waste one on that oh okay. however i have thought about that and i want to have in my living room if i ever get a budget for that the entire just sitting in the corner doing or standing Uh for the whole time yeah Mm. i I love that i think that would be cool for is is anyone ever requested like transcripts of your show 
YouTube does them. It's amazing. Oh, they do. Because oh. I do I do montages, editing stuff a lot, and I have to. Oh, how often have we said poop? Or you know, that's too much. But right. whatever. Yeah, yeah. You just control F on any YouTube video, and you type in a sentence. Really? It's amazing. Yeah. You you have this shit dialed. It really is mind blowing to me. Your uh, capacity to both edit, do all the weird little shit, whatever that stuff's called. The, the animation? The animation. Uh, Tom, shout out to Tom. Uh, He's involved in the description. Too. I have a few people. Tom is, Tom, yeah, Tom does the drawing. The drawing. Yeah, we do uh, but, back but, but and But editing forth. that in and overlaying that and doing all that shit, you do that. And then your knowledge now of YouTube. I didn't know that about YouTube. So... I love this. Okay. I have a. I want to talk about that for a second. Then I'm going to have to. I have to turn this because I don't think you do. But go ahead. Do, okay. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But well, you'll that'll. I. It's all, I can't resist talking about myself. At one point, I'll just launch into <laughs> okay. something about myself. You said something to me the first time you <clears> came on, and uh, I didn't confess. I explained an opinion which I still hold, which is I don't have very good work ethic. Uh, that's the joke of the family. Let me let me tell you what, what it was. Okay. Uh, my, I, I imagine I disagreed with you then, and I'm already. Now you offered a perspective it. that was that is so nice. Okay. Um, my brother works eighty hours a week. My dad did it. I you know I couldn't go I, I couldn't go to school on time because my stomach hurt. You know, like I, right. I can't do stuff. Yeah. Unless it's a compulsion. Unless I'm only doing it because I'm forced to. Because Monday's coming up, and this has to be done. A deadline. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I always thought of that as just this is my addiction. Mm. This being whatever the thing might be, basketball, magic, podcast. Yeah. Uh, and you said, look at how much you're doing. Uh-huh. And I felt like I had to do this because anything that's self-serving, which does exist, but I, I, anyway, I now think of myself sometimes as, I work, like, good for me. Yeah, I work hard. It's absolutely. not just that. It's more than that. Can I tell you, that my, my, the thing, I've, I've really distilled this down recently because I observe it in one of my children and it probably gives me the most amount of pride I get while watching them, which is competence. I, I've, I've, def, I've figured out that my, the thing I'm most attracted to in human beings is competence. I find it incredible. Like, so what you're to me displaying is a ton of competence. You have, you didn't go to fucking film school. You didn't take, I don't know, when you watch a YouTube video, you, you figured this out mm -hmm. and you fucking put all this media, there's so much fucking media for someone who doesn't do this. I have a, I have a one mini SD card I put in my fucking Zoom. And that's the media I got to deal with. You have three different cards for these cameras and God knows what else. And you're incorporating all that and you're editing it. It's a pain in the ass. And it's a, and it's, you're displaying great competence. Could you give me another example outside of me of somebody who's competent that you're attracted to? Yeah. Um, also, I have to, if you don't remember, I compulsively check to make no, sure No, I remember. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was one of my favorite. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Here's what it is. It's a simple fix. We will turn the cameras. Yeah, turn the cameras off. Between you and me. <laughs> Turn the camera. Oh, they're off. Okay. Yeah. Between you and me. <laughs> I don't want to answer this on here. Yeah, but don't I do it. But don't I love what Let's, you call oh, hold me. Hold on. I'm going to turn the cameras off. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You can answer. I have the littlest penis. <laughs> okay. Let me turn it back on. <laughs> I come in like under a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we talk about coming really quick? For a moment, you mean? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, for a while yeah, yeah. about uh, the act of coming fast? Both. Uh, and, and I was curious about like when you're... Uh, proposing the narrative in your head of why it would have stopped working. I am deeply curious. What, I did a podcast yesterday. This camera turned off twice. Because of a battery issue? No, because I the factor, these are not meant to be 4K for blah, blah, blah. I changed the factory setting into something that lets me do 4K. Uh -huh. And because of that, there's some glitches sometimes. Interesting. And I love a 4K because I have you, as you could see, a slightly wider... A, a lot wider than and I then want. Then you can punch in. Well, and punch in, but also in case you stand up or if we wrestle or if there's any action. Yeah, I hope we wrestle. Me too. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh, competence. Competent. Competency. So my wife's incredibly competent. You know, like she can. Uh, well, um, I we did a movie together, and at the end there had to be a dance sequence, and she like watched the person twice. And then knew this whole elaborate fucking dance sequence. And I was out to lunch on it. And it took me a lot of time to learn it. And I was just like, wow, just pick that right up. Like, that's, to me, competent. But I can tell my my eight-year-old Lincoln, I can say, like, <clears throat> I left something in the attic. The keys are in the dish. The code is this. Blah, blah, blah. And I can just deploy her. And she, when she gets to a hurdle, unlike some other kids I observe, they come back until the parent. Oh, I kid. couldn't. Well, no, not her. Just friends' kids, probably. Um, the slightest hurdle, they're, they're right back to the parents. I couldn't do it because of blank. 
Um, my daughter won't do that. She'll, she'll figure that shit out. Like she, she's there to accomplish whatever thing it was and she'll figure it out. She, she's like a fabricator. If she breaks a toy, I notice she's like gotten a few pieces of, uh, twine out of the garage and she's like, uh, she's fabricating something. What do you have uh, twine in the garage for? I have every fucking thing in my garage. I have safety wire, chicken wire, twine. Uh, I have coat hangers cut up in case I need to make a, that kind of knot, uh, rope, uh, electrical extra, you know. So your garage is to survival, which my my uh, storage space is to podcast equipment. Yeah, yeah. I have virtually everything one would need. Like Monica the other day, she was leaving our driveway. She called uh, right before she got to her house and she said, my, my tire light is on. And I said, okay, well, uh, that means you've driven over a nail. You're losing pressure. Get back to my house really quick or you're going to just have your car sitting in the carport with a uh, flat tire and then we've got to change it or get a tow truck all that kind of shit so she raced back we go to uh my garage and i've got a tire plug kit i've got several tire plug kits and i pull the nail out and then i put a plug in we inflate it and she's good to go and she's been on that tire now for three weeks shout out to monica we'll put her instagram handle up here and tire plugs they're incredible i've saved thousands of dollars by knowing how to plug a tire which actually brings me to an exciting point we'll, we'll be right back with a word okay. from our sponsors carpet hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. And we're back. Yes. Um, Because this does remind me of I Dream of Genie. Can you go, does anyone do that? What, what did you do? You just blinked. Yeah, but forcefully, like, and maybe she wiggled her nose. No, uh, wiggling the nose was, uh, was bewitched. Okay. Either of those two. I feel like one of them went, and she could make stuff happen with her eyes. Um... I, we could do that, but I made a choice. You don't like it. I don't need it. You don't need it. Right, I don't right, want it. Right, right, right. <laughs> sure. Uh, also, this is something that I do as a tick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it'll yeah. it'll end up me editing it, watching, be like, fuck, I got to just do a whole bunch of stuff every time I'm nervous. Have you ever heard of um, Rich Fresh? It's clothing. No. And it's a guy, and he is a master tailor who creates clothes and all the... Like big NBA guys wear them. Very big in the I gotta tell world. you, I'm kind of exclusive to Mac Weldon. Okay, I just learned this because I interviewed the guy. I I'm gonna put this in like top ten highlights of having interviewed a few hundred people now. He and I started bonding over ticks that we had as children, and it was like the most wonderful 25 minutes. And we got into some of the things like that's why I asked what the narrative is like when you're like, oh, it's probably I wonder if that thing's still going. I wonder like what 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 plausible explanation you make for yourself. It's but yours all, is all historic. It's happened before. And now you're just afraid it, of it. Uh, I am. I am 95 percent here with you. Yeah. I'm 90 percent here with you. Yeah. And my best. I'm 95. Yeah. And then the rest is combined where wherever and me editing. Yeah. And watching this and be like, why didn't I fucking turn around? Yeah. And whenever the guest says something that like, I, not that I don't care about everything, but there's some things like, ooh, I'm in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do find myself by design retracting a little so I can make sure that I got it. So right when it's about to take off, you have a short panic of, fuck, I bet we better get this. I'm good at this now. It's not a panic anymore. What okay. it is is, I know it's happening. Yeah. I now, a little me is waiting for a pause. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I do that. And also, I didn't do this with you. Okay. Because you've been here. Yeah. But before the podcast, I do tell every guest, I just want to let you know, I compulsively check this every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. still present. Yeah. I you love it. I love it. And um, to me, what, what that parallels is um, you're basically, if you were a camera operator, you would know it's the moment you're about to start your Zoom, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh -huh. ooh, shit's about to, they're just about to tell me that they were murdered as a child uh -huh. and then you're boom you're in there that's what's so great about 4k yeah that digital push oh my gosh i Did love you a digital see push. if you watched inside not yet i thought of you oh I, bo burnham yeah who i had i was totally clueless on until i watched this thing you told me years ago that you don't like going to watch stand-up shows mm. because um, I don't remember if it was stand up or a particular person, whatever it was, you don't like watching people do stuff who are similar to you. Makes you feel bad. Do you remember that? Hmm. If you don't remember it, do you connect no, to but, that? No, but, but <clears throat> I don't like watching stand up because um, I too am a performer. So I, I take on the anxiety of whether it's going to fail or not. That, that's oh. really what I'm dealing with when I'm watching. Like, I, it's going to be 
mirror neuron -y. Like, I'm going to experience it. If they start taking a shit, I'm going to be on the ride with them. It's that's emotionally what, draining. Yeah, but that's part of, to me, what the, what the art is, is making people feel stuff. Yes, but I think your general audience member is having a different experience. Like, they're happy to see someone eat shit because that's funny and that'll be a part of their funny story that they tell afterwards. Oh, I don't think people like watching people eat shit. I think that, I think that when you see somebody fall, when the average person sees somebody fall and get hurt, there is... At the there's some empathy for they don't they're they're uncomfortable. Let me let me try to skin this another way. Okay. So when you see someone fall, you get a very visceral feeling, right? And that's the mirror neuron thing. You've done that, so you you have that memory of falling. So you're there. If you see someone blast off in a rocket ship, you don't really experience anything. It's it's novel, and you're like, oh, what's he's about to tell me how this feels. If we had all blasted off in a rocket ship and you're watching the countdown, you'd start in your body feeling, remembering what that feeling would be like. The problem with that analogy is something that I, is, is, this, is the, the internet trolls or the people who cut you off. If you don't get to see the person's face, if you aren't seeing each yeah, other, it's yeah. a completely different sport. True, true. But when you, if, if I've never been, uh, I've never been, I guess I'm a performer, but I've never been on Broadway. I've never... I'm not a professional violinist. If I were to watch a violinist play and their string broke or they farted or whatever, I'd be yeah. like, oof. Yeah, yeah. And you would be probably, I think, comparing it to something similar. As a like, performer, right? Yeah. Uh, but I would argue it's, 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 I've had a lot of experiences in life and there's few things as unique as being up there all by yourself when uh -huh. things are going bad. Right. It is, it is truly, <laughs> my, I just got goosebumps all over the, my back thinking of it part of what because you are all alone <laughs> yeah i mean you're, you're always all alone. alone any like you're always alone you are but all the normal defense mechanisms people have of like you could blame it on this or that guy didn't show up or so and so is supposed to do this no the buck starts and stops directly with you and then and that's it you I mean i've heard people blame audiences and shit but i mean we all know there's no you just gotta take it you yeah, my my, my def the 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 what I become as a stand-up comedian is from a completely defensive place of I'm I'm alone anyway. Yeah. Uh so I love I love the thing that you I love making people f controlling I, how you feel and it's sometimes it's not good, sometimes it's good. I was just going to say and I don't know why it took me this long to recognize this. Is you and I are different kinds of performers. So you're like I'm trying to think who I interviewed who's really really funny and he loves to bomb like it's oh, one of, i listened to it um it, it was so funny. uh it was uh uh he got arrested was, for cocaine too it, uh, uh he was from um the with damon, damon the show with uh with happy endings yep 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 why well, can't I remember his name oh, he's God, so I funny i adore him i'm so mad I can't well i'll put it name. we'll put up his instagram uh, <laughs> hey, you're so, no, i mean truly i fucking love it was one of my favorite yeah. interviews the guy's so entertaining he's so funny yeah and I believe him. He loves that feeling, uh, that sinking feeling of bombing, and he and he craves it. And you have a similar. Th you I hate bombing, but for you, how you would define a bomb, yeah, is different than how I would. So if you have some really uh, elongated awkwardness with the audience, and everyone's brutally uncomfortable. You enjoy that period if it's if, if it's, you're in control of it. If I'm in control of it, and there's no reason to do that if there isn't a payoff. Right. The you problem land is that plane. The problem is where I said it perfectly. Everybody hates me, or everybody's mm. uncomfortable, and then I miss the smallest tear trigger. Yeah. And that's the, the difference. <laughs> and then it was all for naught. Uh, I had uh, uh, Joel McHale on the other day, uh -huh. and he and I have a similar thing I talked to him about, which is just. Um, when, when a comedian misses, they're not funny. And that's part of what it is. But yeah. when he, the thing that I connect with him and is sometimes because it's a little mean or uncomfortable. Yeah. If we miss, not only are we not funny, it's that guy sucks. That guy's an asshole. Yeah, you're you know, a dick on top of not being funny. You came here and I didn't, I didn't see right when you buzzed in because yeah. I don't have good reception in this place. Right. And then I got a text from you saying, hey, if this is some type of, I'll put in my words, ruse. I, 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 <laughs> bit, bit, yeah. That's fine, but I have two minutes for it. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, I, of course I know what you mean, but that sucks. That your instincts are um, um ironically punking you. It doesn't suck. I watch your show. I think it's hysterical. So um, I'm. It's crossing my mind that yeah. it, it's feasible that you have some cameras pointed at me, and you want to see how agitated I'm going to get and how long it'd yeah. be before I would leave. That would be a very funny thing to observe if you're not me. So I, that crosses my mind. That would be funny. I'd like to watch you invite a guest here and then just not answer, not answer, not answer, and then see how long. 
it could almost be a test of like well a positive way would be like self-esteem like how much does someone value their own time another thing would be oh, like sure. just, just no how, one would look at it like I, that no i know <laughs> how thin someone's skin is <laughs> yeah uh you know yeah podcasting is a, is very different though i'm performing to an audience it is inviting people into my home you're doing me a favor i i think it makes me a, a lesser host that i have to have these filters of not being able to really have my creativity be open because you know, you more than most people, but everybody who comes over, it's like, hey, thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and I can't be like, thanks for doing this, and uh, you know, think fast. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, like a can't do that on television. Just bu dump slime on me from your balcony, right? And also, this is my living room. I can't l figuratively or you literally. You could have, have pulled that. something off outside like i was prepared to get beamed by a water balloon or something the only time ironically enough that something happened and it wasn't intentional but and people think it is yeah is when kristen came over and the postmates driver this is a little claustrophobic i'm gonna be honest you can move some of the stuff okay it's so hot out here i know it's like i'm so getting hot in here sweating thinking about this do you want to build a snowman come on let's go and play I never see you anymore Come out the door It's like you've gone away We used to be best buddies That's a different chord And now we're not Yep, I wish you could tell me why Do you want to build a snowman? It doesn't have to be a snowman Okay, bye. That was good. <laughs> ah! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that scared the What? Who is it? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Why are you, why are you coming up through the... I typed for door, you do not answer. Oh my god, Ricky. Oh, for, what is this? This is so bad. Hey man, what, what are you doing? Wait, 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 why didn't, you can't... Come through the balcony, though. Oh, is this Postmates? What are you doing, man? I end up on door. You know, you know, respond for me. In, in, in fact, a uh, part of me was like, why aren't you protecting my bride? You should be out there throwing haymakers. A man just scaled the side of something. I don't know how how high up we are, but he had a ladder. It, it, he had a ladder. Yeah. It, the post Postmates guy. He he travels with a ladder. Uh there's there's construction. Oh, I'm, he, I'm he, surrounded by construction. He um uh but there was commandeered a, a ladder. Commandeered a ladder. Okay. <laughs> um I uh th that instinct to not protect Kristen is something I've noticed about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have an I have an not, example. Wait, hold on. Not not Kristen specifically, just <laughs> just a, a woman. Not okay. people. Oh, just women. I know okay. you you've said it a few times, but I heard it most recently on Prince Harry of like uh you're looking to you're looking for people to protect when you're actually been the fighter starting it. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. My story about myself is that one of the few good things about me is that I protect people. Yeah. And that and people like me because they feel protected by me. Yes. Which A, they don't, which I've learned. Sometimes they do. You fix a tire. <laughs> a, a few friends from Michigan. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm talking more in the physical yeah, yeah, threat yeah. realm. Um, PTR. Y yes. Really quick. That was good. Um, do you not know that trick about me? No. Can you do I get MB? Oh, wow. OW. Your skills, they don't end. Y S T D A. E. I'm a bad speller. Okay. I interrupted too much. Fast forward. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Fast forward. Are you talking to you or an editor? <laughs> Bo both Whatever. of us. I don't anyway. like cutting too much stuff out because then people don't believe what happened. Yeah. So I sometimes <laughs> I'll just like do 300, you know, so they yeah. saw everything that happened. <laughs> that reminds me of a Hollywood story I want to tell you. But okay. at, at any rate. So I knew of Mac Weldon because of their underwear. Because my dad has been wearing this. Yeah, my, he dad, he, my dad loves Mac Weldon. He says it's the most comfortable underwear. He's like number one fan. But they're bigger than underwear. Polos, t-shirts, shorts, pants, swimwear. They have light, breathable fabric technology. L-B-F-T. They look cool too. So they're sending us some stuff. What did you pick and what are you excited yeah, about? Yeah, so uh, their underwear. I mean, I've been hearing about it for a while. It's just, they're, it's just I hear their underwear is so good. Underwear is tough to find. Uh, underwear and dentists. I feel like you need a friend's recommendation. So here's your Dr. Glassman recommending to you guys, Dr. Mac Weldon, best underwear in the game. It doesn't matter how much you spend, your first order, if you go to macweldon.com slash Tyso and use promo code Tyso, you're getting 20% off. If you just want to try their underwear, if you just want the board shorts, visit macweldon, W-E-L-D-O-N.com slash Tyso and use promo code Tyso. And if you try their underwear and you don't like it, you could send me their underwear. I'll wear it. I'll send it back to you. No, I can't do that, right? 
Probably not. It's just a but, lot of logistics. But that is MacWeldon.com slash Tyso, promo code Tyso for 20% off. Mac Weldon, reinventing men's basics. Say it like my mom. Mac Weldon. She goes, Mac Weldon, reinventing uh, men's basics. Thank you. <laughs> Rick. Ricky. What do you love more than sleeping? I don't know, a lot of things. No, you don't love anything more than sleeping. I, don't know, I love I love my family, food. I, I don't want to lie to my audience by pretending that sleeping is the only thing that matters. But sleeping is up there. It's top five. Absolutely. Right. Here's a problem with going mattress shopping. You can't judge a mattress by laying in it. Who who knows? You got to sleep in it and wake up in it. And I got to tell you, Helix Mattress is the place to go. Also, we watch some TV while we're in our mattresses. So it's nice when it's like not too bouncy, not too firm, because we're like doing little activities in there. Absolutely. But there is something funny about saying we watch TV when we're on our mattresses. I know because we're talking about how great yes. Helix Mattress is, but you know, to not say bed. I don't know. That just feels funny. Is it? You, yeah. You, you want to go upstairs and get get on the mattress? <laughs> I don't know. I've been though at hotels where the mattress has been so bad that I had to sit on the floor. Yeah. I still bring my own pillows just in case because I can't bring a mattress. Not yet. Unless well, this we're... podcast blows up. I hear Robert Downey Jr. Do you, you know about this? Okay. When he goes places, like when he's filming a movie or something, he's there for two months and an extended stay. He has his own furniture brought in. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe a Helix sleep mattress. Maybe. Absolutely. I don't know, actually, if Robert uses it. People don't always know what they want. You could go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and take a two-minute sleep quiz. They ask things like, do you sleep on your back? Do you sleep on your side? Do you like a soft mattress? Do you like a firm mattress? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? These types of things they figure out, and then they will recommend the mattress that's best for you. Take the sleep quiz. Tell them how you like to sleep. If you don't like the mattress, you have 100 days to try it out. They'll come even pick it up for you. It's a risk-free guarantee. Do you know what else is good? Trying to get a mattress off an apartment is impossible. It's cool. The, 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 the mattress comes packaged up in a thing that, that could, the box was this thick. It's cool too when you open it up and it goes, it's kind of like the mattress is so excited to be in your new home that it's getting a boner. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders plus two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Betty, do this in your, in your in the most American accent you can. Helixsleep.com slash Tyso for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah, so when you, when you, I, I have just discovered, well, not just, I have discovered this, that if my identity is I'm someone that protects people, well, lo and behold, I have to, to demonstrate that occasionally for yeah. that to be a believable narrative about myself. So yes, I, I think I inadvertently took things to the next level quite often because I'm confirming the story about myself. And it became self-fulfilling at some point, right? Where uh, well, there was well, nothing to protect until you pushed them. Right. Once, once, well, Kristen just said, you know, I don't feel safer that you're this way. I feel more in danger. Right. And once th that was laid out for me and I was like, oh, she doesn't want that. Lo and behold, I stopped seeing that. I used to see it wasn't shit. valuable anymore. You can't imagine how much stuff I saw. Uh, regularly, I'd be at a stoplight and I'd see some huge dickhead screaming at a grandma outside of his car. Like I would see stuff all the time that required me to get yeah, involved. Yeah, and you don't know what the grandma did. <laughs> You're right. She could be a racist. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. She could have yelled a time. racial slur. We don't know. So that thing of protecting, I, I my we've talked about this before but my value in physical realm came from basketball yeah and being aggressive and fighting back and it wasn't protecting a woman as much as i am able to be cool yeah, <laughs> or yeah, whatever yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, but um so that happens i that happens to me when when i feel that something is a threat i do i seek that adrenaline and i like it yeah um, yeah yeah at the same time i'm a i think I am a very logical person. Uh huh. And sometimes the juice isn't worth the squeeze, and I don't have to calculate it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. I'll okay. give you a perfect example Please. of where I didn't protect your wife. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? She's fine. To and, uh, to totally. And I logically, my, my intuition told me that. But here's an example that happened with Betty when I first met her. Okay. Um, Bill Lawrence yeah. uh, was filming Ted Lasso in London. He knows I like performing comedy in London. He said, if you want to come, you could stay with me, do some comedy. Yeah. I said, great. I'm talking to this random, at the time, girl online who lives in London, yeah. Betty. I end up going there. I meet Betty, and we've been literally living together since. How long ago was this? 
Uh, it'll be two years in September. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, and I meet her three days later. She's going to a wedding in Spain. I go with her to Spain. Oh. I'm not a traveler. I don't leave my house. I'm not going to yeah, Spain. I'm, yeah. Then we go to Rome and we did all, this is great. I just met her two weeks ago. Yeah. So point being, you want to show this person who you are, mm. but also this is who I am. Yeah, I just yeah, met, right. We're walking in Rome. Well, and also the older you get, the quicker you're like, this is it. Like, I'm not going to. I can only keep up the ruse so long. I got lucky with it was always that because I didn't realize there even was a ruse until recently. Oh, right, and then right, it's like, right, right. Uh, it's just fine. I've yeah. done well enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm walking a little bit ahead of her um, on a separate side of the street. And then she catches up to me 15 seconds later and she can't believe what just happened. And I don't s see fear on her, mm -hmm. but... I've also incidentally learned she burned herself once. She made soup, the uh, and she put it in a Vitamix or whatever. It blew up because I think a bullet. The way thank you just you. did that, yes. yeah, perfect. Yeah. By the way, good. Uh -huh. Whatever that thing is, we need to get the person to see if that's a bullet. <laughs> it's a bullet. <laughs> okay. Um, it was too hot pressure. Blah blah blah. And yeah. she's laughing about what happened, and I didn't realize her instincts are laughing. I mean, she had horrible burns. All right, scalded. It was bad. Yeah. And then she started crying maybe 20 seconds later. But at first it's like, oh, take your shirt off. What do we, you know? Yeah. You know, show me your tits. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, then I realized, sure. oh, she's in pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm now telling you this, realize, realizing in this moment, oh, maybe she was scareder than I realized. But basically what happened was a man grabbed her ass, ass and touched a little of her pussy. Oh. Okay. So mm. Dax. Yeah you know, rips off his shirt and goes right. after the guy. Mm -hmm. I, who, the guy who I, I saw, a, he was turning the corner. So I, I'll be honest with you. It, I, I didn't see a huge man. Right. So I, I, maybe I'm lying to myself, but it wasn't, I, I don't know what to do. This, yeah, what can yeah. I do to this guy? It wasn't also, that. Also, are you in Spain? Because I would probably Rome. be mapping on some, um, some national stereotypes too. Oh, I don't think I thought about that, that kind of okay. stuff. No. Okay. Um, to me, if there was, it would Like, I don't want to fight a guy in Russia. It's just a bad idea. Sure. <laughs> you, you follow me? It, and then we could go down the chain This there. wasn't any of that. This okay. guy was, in my mind, at his strongest an equal match, or I'm stronger. Okay, great. But even in a fight, when you win, you get punched. I don't want to get, you know, yeah. is the juice, wor juice worth a squeeze is what I meant for that. Yeah. So I, I saw him, and I have a second because he's, he turned the corner, so I had to find him. And I went, are, are you okay? And yeah. she said, yeah. She said, yeah, it's just weird that that happened. Yeah. And I said, honestly, I feel like, I mean, th you don't need protection. It happened. Yeah. Am I, I, I could go after him. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, like, yeah, I don't uh -huh. want to. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. And she said, no, it's fine. It's just my instinct wasn't like, because it wasn't still happening. You made the right choice. Although I would argue if you had beat the fuck out of that guy for about 12 minutes, I have to imagine the next time he went to grab someone's ass pussy, he might think, right. I might get the shit beat out of me. So, somebody who loves servicing others, I don't necessarily need to be protecting Betty, but I'm protecting the next Betty. <laughs> right. Ah. Right, right. I'm right. Not, I don't, you don't, you're, you're fine. You're, you're sleeping I'm like not a that little generous. baby at night. <laughs> yeah, you don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been um, real excited to get in that mix. And it, admittedly, I can say... But what would you do? I, I, I beat the fuck out of someone. You'd get arrested it. for it? Whatever. I would beat that person because for a long while for grabbing my wife's pussy. Yeah. Um, also, you know what? I, 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 I um, yeah, that's, that's just me. No, but you're I'm not. I have no judgment of you. I just know what I would do. Uh, you're right. Well, well you're, no, I don't know that I'm right. It's just my the yeah, road I'm right. on. You're that's better. That's cooler. That's cooler. But uh, I don't know. If I, I, I being I, violence not cool. I, I don't. This is nothing nice. I, I, I think people should do. I'm just, I'm just being honest with what I would do. I would come unhinged if I observe that, and then I would act. But I also have a much different childhood than you, so there's many reasons why I have a different reaction to that. She cut to a clip of my mom as a kid, just everyone grabbing her pussy and my dad laughing and me just sitting there being like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to have to call my mom and see if she's got any footage of that. Um, but what I want to say, what I want to own up to is there. one of my favorite lines ever in a movie is from Pulp Fiction. You've seen it, I assume. When Travolta is telling his, his drug dealer uh, about his car getting keyed. I don't remember, remember this. No. And at some point he's talking about this because he asked him, how's your Malibu? And he's like, do you know some fucking piece of shit keyed it? And they're like, oh my God, really? And at one point he goes, 
you know, it'd almost be worth him keying the car if I could have mm-hmm. caught the motherfucker. And I'm like, I feel that way. I always tell yeah. Kristen, like, I hope you do. I don't want someone to punch you, but I do want you to get shoved. Something you could brush off. I do want you to get shoved in my presence <laughs> so that I can confirm my narrative about myself. It's, it's kind of an ongoing joke about that I, I'm willing to have her get shoved or maybe just elbowed. Not punched. I understand. Yeah. I used to, uh, I, I, uh, my first kiss wasn't until 17, which if you could relate to high school, I'm a senior. That's, yes, that's late, that's you know? That's late, yeah. And I used to, how do you kiss? What do you, how, not, I mean, yes, that. And I, I, I had recently talked about this on a podcast about how when I was in high school, I bought a book on how to kiss. Oh, my goodness. Um, because I didn't know, is it top lip on top lip, bottom lip on bottom, or do you stagger? Sure, And sure. it was a book on eating pussy because nobody makes a kissing book. <laughs> um, hence the TMJ. I've made that joke but, before. But... but good good on you thank you for reading a book about eating pussy because my dad didn't explain it to me and that's the did dip. yours every day oh wow <laughs> no no of course <laughs> yeah listen when you get you know no i didn't learn i didn't learn that from my dad yeah but uh but and you, my, and you don't want to learn it from your mom i don't i, no, I, I don't want to learn no, it from my mom no. i don't want to learn it worse yeah i'll learn yeah. from anyone else's mom you could list so many things that would involve hurting me before i would have that conversation with my mother. okay yeah, yeah well we'll put them up here i guess okay yeah yeah you could but it wasn't the actual how do you kiss a girl like the 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 choreography it was how do you get to the point where you kiss a girl and my oh, my okay. fantasy was always that i want i don't want her to get punched in the face but i want somebody to throw her into a locker yeah so yep. i could so i could get in there you know yeah yeah rescue her yeah but then once i get the girl i go you're okay right (laughs) i use so i had a for two years i had an older stepsister she was three grades ahead of me maybe and i knew her from my elementary school like i had a crush on her before my mom started dating her dad and then ultimately married him so i was living with this girl i had a crush that's literally what fed that's what all porn is now by the way Uh, so howard stern tells me yeah that seems to be his you don't know what porn is Oh, no, I know what ahead. porn is. I just don't watch it much. Um, but anyways, I would lay in bed at night, and I was like in third grade, and I would, I would just, I knew exactly where it was going to be. She was going to be under the um, these things, the monkey bars, uh-huh. and some guy was going to push her, and then I was going to tackle that guy and beat that guy up, and then literally I was going to then walk across <laughs> the, re- the 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 recess yard. Uh-huh. And my friend Clay Smades was going to just fold in. And the three of us were just going to like walk. My, my girl and my best oh, friend. Right. And I, I had this every night. I just mapped this out in my head. Yeah. And it never happened. She was in love with my older brother. It was like a love triangle in the, in the family home. Did anything ever happen? No. No. He didn't like her and she didn't like me. That's a bummer. <laughs> well, that's how it works when you're three years older. I think you hope for my brother's sake. Thank God. We uh, I want to go it's back be to a different story to the Bo Burnham thing. Oh, yeah. But yeah, also yeah. Betty's here. Uh, if either of us remember by the end of this, I would love to get um, Betty's perspective on the on that because oh, we haven't talked about that, it. That would be great. And, and we got to be delicate. Um, or sh- sh- who gives a fuck? You know, <laughs> no, no, I don't think we have to be delicate. Not with her. With you. Oh, Why? The last thing you want to hear, what if what if what we discover is she's like, yeah, I've never really thought of Ricky the same since that day. Then uh, I, I already know how well she thinks of me. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't be able to deal with her thinking Going any lower. Oh, any <laughs> higher. Okay, great, 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 great. All right, well, then it's going to work out. Betty! <laughs> um, uh, Bo Burnham. Yeah, so I, I have a problem. Uh, not a problem. I just don't. Fred Armisen, I think, is, is so uh, talented and funny. Yeah. I have a hard time watching him. Because he does stuff. I'm not saying I'm as good. I'm not saying he's as good. Mm. But he does stuff that's similar. And he has a platform to where, well, it's his now. And it, it makes me retreat from the thing that I'm doing that other people may have even thought was different enough. Sure. But, but my... And certainly existed before both of you. I, there's yeah, Nobody's there's, breaking new ground. Have we talked about that? Uh, I have a theory that there's only eight jokes in the world. No, but I believe that. Yeah. They say there's only eight storylines. Is that what it is? Maybe I took it from that. Something like that. It's a very small number of There's only lines. so many. Yeah, there's only... Yeah, man the, versus man. Man versus nature. Man versus himself. Well, you so know what the on. problem with that is? Hmm. None of those were women. Yeah. I mean, that's this was very old. So, yeah, yeah just worried about man. But I was just patronizing. Could, okay. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just felt a disconnect there. It's like, oh, no, I don't... I mean, it could be a woman. It's just, you know, whatever. Who gives a shit? Um, uh, Burnham. Yeah, Fred so Armistead. Bo Bo is brilliant. Yeah, and there's a similar but too close to you. You feel like 
I, I, well, it's here's just the, the the personal thing I'm taking from it is I just know I've seen him do stuff that is probably this going separately. Yeah. But it stopped me from working on that thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to. That's my own issue. Yeah. But I don't want to watch something that is going to stop me from perfecting something, which with the tools I have at the moment, my only way of doing that is not watching it. But at the same time, I think he's so great and I'm hearing such good things that I'm probably going to watch it. Yeah. But I'm going to be upset watching it. You should. And I can now see why you feel that way because what he did, I could definitely see you doing, which is he took quarantines like I'm going to make something. I did. This. I made one. I never put it out. Oh, really? I made a diary uh, mm-hmm. where I would check in. My, I, my, my, my motivation was watching the beard grow. Oh, and right, I have the right. date, and I was doing these things, and I was calling Ellie Fitness to cancel my membership, and a month later, I'd call back, and they said, well, we didn't do this, and I said, well, actually, I have on tape, and, oh, it's, and I might put it out, yeah. and then I even did a balcony special where I'm on my balcony, um, and my some of my friends were outside, and I'm doing it, and then I filmed. It was like a test to make the thing, yeah. and I never made the thing because yeah. it's hard. You know what I'll commend him on is... And in, in, in it, it's encouraging because I, I often think of Chappelle, who's like God. Mm-hmm. He's far beyond. He transcends being a comedian in so many ways. Yeah. And the fact that he can teach you history during his set and then teach you perspective and all the things he can do. And of course, I, 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 I would watch it sometimes and think, well, probably only a black guy is can do that because he's got such a great perspective to share and we need to be educated and i don't know how a white guy does that does that make any sense it makes sense i uh because you reject people, it i, I just I, don't know I, what i, I would see a it. white guy get on there and educate us on i don't i'd be like the, uh, the, the thing about uh, the thing about having uh, uh being interesting mm-hmm. is it's two th- it's two it's having a point of view mm-hmm. and being able to express it yeah, and if you don't need to be black to have a point of view, it's you, a very you, specific one. You do not, clearly, you do not. But you'd be hard pressed to find an issue that deserved exposing that didn't have the white male at the crux of that. Okay, you know, I mean, I don't know. I I, I also can't give you a counter argument. Yeah, I just can't think of one where it's like. You know, this is what happened to... I just have been going through it. Like, I watched The Lady in the Dale, that documentary. I don't know if you saw it, but... I was like, oh, yeah. Fucking brutal to be trans in the 80s. Oh, my God. Like, the way people were attacked and killed. Terrible. Regardless. Why are the biggest podcasters white males? I think because white males and I've experienced this in guests. Like first we couldn't ex- we couldn't explain why when we would invite white males it was almost unanimously yes. Yes to whom? What do you mean? To be interviewed. Oh, the white male would say yes. Yes. Oh. And you know somewhere below that would be white women. Like we'd have to invite three white women for every yes. I don't know. And then way below that is we're inviting like dozens of black guests and only getting them once in a blue moon. And so, of course, Monica and I are like, what, how do you explain that? What is going on? And I think on some level, every white dude's like, yeah, I got two hours of shit to say. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm like, they're used to thinking that they just should pontificate. I mean, I think we all feel like, yeah, we got a lot to say. We, we're used yeah. to sharing it. We've never, we're never in a meeting like keeping it quiet historically. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think it, it has to be that. It has to be like some sense that yes, I'm interesting enough to talk for two hours. Well, I, I there isn't a person on the planet that I that I would want to listen to more than Chappelle. Uh, if Chappelle had an hour out a day, I'm listening to it every day. A thousand percent. So I. I, I agree with you, I guess. Here's the here's what I'm saying. On that. Okay, here's what I'm saying. Like, if you look at other... When people aren't just telling jokes, right? When they're actually explaining some issue they have with culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other example would be like Bill Burr, who I think is brilliant. I think he's really, really funny. But ultimately, he's like, he's making fun of cal- cancel culture. He's making fun of like, why didn't they cast a killer as the killer? It's a great joke. It's funny. But ultimately, he is just defending status quo in some weird way. Is the opposite that he's not defending or is the opposite that you're becoming educated by? Is Chappelle not defending or is Chappelle Chappelle educating? 
I think Chappelle's educating. He's like exposing you, or at least me. He's exposed me to a bunch of different historical things I didn't know about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he's also... And you trust him. A right? thousand percent. You never check it. No. Me neither. I notice that he says something. I go to myself, oh, I concede. Yeah, I guess part of me he is like, power. A, I trust him. B, he couldn't have got this far, right? He wouldn't have, like, if he, he workshopped this at other stages and people would have said, that's not. They all he, said what we, what we do, I think. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm not discrediting. I trust him. Uh, yeah. But you're right. We are so subjective as pe people, viewers, everything. But he, yeah, so he's educated me. Bill Burr, again, I think he's brilliant. But ultimately, it, it feels a little bit like he's just defending status quo. And so, anyways, this is way too long to point out that Bo Burnham invites you into his depression and yeah. his anxiety about these issues. Yeah. And like, so I just loved it because I thought, oh, good. It's not just the domain of a black comedian to have some social commentary aspect. Uh, it's open to everyone, and this is a different way to do it. And I and I love that that's where comedy's going, or at least that or where some of the performers are at. Where it's like I laugh nonstop. Something was really creative and and, and awesome. And like you, I get jealous. I didn't think of that. And then and then I'm experiencing something beyond that. It just makes yeah. it like complete. Like I love it. Uh, there was, Richard Pryor did that. You know, Richard Pryor yeah. was like hysterical but also inviting you into a point of view that no one was in it's really hard yeah it's really hard when when you're told your job number one is to be funny mm -hmm. when that's just because that's what people said stand-up is mm -hmm. but it's it's just really it's really it's really really hard it is and i think bo burnham is uh just in case i wasn't clear is unbelievable and it's just it's it it stifles me sometimes from yeah. finding my you know well thing. that's my um i think i might have even said it the last time i was here but i used to have this preoccupation with vince vaughn and uh, largely <laughs> because i saw wedding crashers and i was like well i don't know what i'll do in movies now because that was yeah. my plan uh -huh. Uh -huh. is to be like quote alpha but getting his ass kicked the whole time like being the butt of the joke but with an alpha persona which was not common in comedy you, all throughout the you 80s. You told me, which um, I've said on my podcast so many times, all the, the little things that you put in my bag. Um, uh, two go here. One is the don't raise your hand for anything. Do you remember telling me that? No. Um, don't raise your hand for anything. Is it anything. worth telling you the story? I can tell you what it meant. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling myself being extra precious with the time I have with you. because, like, Why? Because I want to podcast with you every day. Oh, okay. You know well, what I mean? Let's and, make this into five. Um, they... Uh, 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 Undateable, the, the sitcom I was yeah. on, season uh, one and two, um, the two stars went to New York for upfronts. Season three, five of the seven did. Yeah. My boss Bill said, it sucks that NBC didn't want you two to go or let you two, whatever the word was. Yeah. If you fly yourself out there, I'll put you up in a hotel. I'll make sure you get to go to all this stuff. And I wanted to have the experience, but I also like, I don't want to go to this thing I'm not invited to. Yeah. Am I being stubborn by not going because of pride or my my is my intuition right by saying this isn't my position and either either choice i would have made would have made me uncomfortable because did i make the right one yeah uh and i called you and you told me your job is to show up show up for what you're supposed to show up for and uh have people like you and don't raise your hand that you want anything else mm. uh -huh, and uh -huh. i immediately it's hard it's easy well, after you told me, oh, okay, my, I, you know, somebody somebody <laughs> sent me a comment the other day that said I should start selling shirts that say my eyes are watering because whenever something happens, I say, and I'm going to tell you now, my eyes are watering. Oh, I it's love easy it. now. I love it's it. easy. It's still going. I'm um, put, I'm zooming in now <laughs> because because uh, it just makes sense, and you told me so. So you know because I decided that you know. <laughs> right, I'm Chappelle in yeah. the story. <laughs> so not only did I not go, I didn't want to go. Uh -huh. um, I mean, you know, it didn't take away from the fact, oh, that's a bummer, I can't experience this, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's like, yeah. no. Yeah. And also, and I'm not great at it yet, uh, or, I, I, you know, I say yet in hopes that I will be, but I show up and I, I have a voice every now and then that says, that's not likable. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like, like, because I want to be, the everyone wants to be special and great. and. Yeah. You first of all, do you have that in you? I will forever think I do, even if I don't. Yeah. But I have to. All the stars still have to line. I have to have the right role, the right director. Oh, yeah, I have yeah. to be in the mood. I have to. The cameras yeah. have to be on. They have to use that take. Yeah. Whatever the they thing have is. to release it on the right weekend. Uh huh. Yeah. So 
so I go, um, I go, instead of that being everything, I go, well, people want me on their next thing. Mm-hmm. And that just makes it easy. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing it right. No, but- I, yeah. Also, I tell this to my, my eight-year-old often, my daughter. I said, let people brag for you. They will. Let you just keep being radical. People will observe it, and they'll brag for you. The bragging will get done, but you should not instigate your own bragging. Where did you get that that perspective? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think just being grossed out by myself when I've bragged or when I'm like backing you into some story where I'll be the hero of, you know. Whenever you're feeling like you need your guests to know how great you are, uh-huh. I should put together a montage of how many times I've talked about you on this thing. And, <laughs> and I can control just, F the transcript. And I'll just play it for them. Uh-huh. Like, look, normally I would tell you how I lent money to this kid. <laughs> but we actually have him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess, it, and it reads as confidence, ultimately, that you don't need credit, praise. But I think we, this, I know this was part of one of our conversations once where I got all bent out of shape. I was convinced someone stole the sketch of mine and put it on Saturday Night Live. I mean, I was really convinced of this and it was driving me mad. And the person said, Hey, if you think that's the only good idea you're ever going to have in your life, you get a lawyer. If you think you have unlimited great ideas, fucking keep it moving. So, similarly, Cut to the landlord incident, <laughs> I, was like, I didn't do it exactly that, but yeah. But if, if, if you believe that you're going to shine often, then you're in no hurry to be observed shining. That's the harder one. But also, it's in my, with this podcast, it's in my, there are people now, I don't own the IP on things I'm doing. I'm not the first person to put in pictures or animations or slow pushes or comedy zooms. Or, yeah. But nobody else in podcasts was doing it. And I'm seeing some of the bigger ones doing it. And there are some that are so blatant that uh-huh. I, it's, it's, it takes an adult in me to not fucking... I already ha- fantasize about taking the clips, showing the date, and then the, the two weeks later, and these things, and then having somebody else release it, and me like, I don't want to show this, but... Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and I go into this thing, well, you know, Rick, if you think if you think this animation is what makes you special, then get a lawyer or be upset. But if you think this animation is just a, a, a byproduct of the creativity that... And one of 25,000 things you'll do in the next 40 years that is interesting. That, that would be great if it were true. I and think it it's be. true. But that, that, is, that one is harder for me. Yeah, it, it is hard. But like I have that confidence in you tenfold. Of course, you, you didn't. You're creative as a motherfucker. It doesn't end. You were making video. Like, I don't know. Maybe you were hung up on the, the way you made videos on Instagram early on. Other people maybe did that too. I don't know. No one's even fucking thinking about those Instagram videos now. It's like, like yeah, we're here. You'll always be two weeks ahead. It's fine. The, I think the cancerous thing that we all can easily get infected with in comedy is all that. Yeah. People think this. Someone's going to say who oh. did it first. Like, like no one is fucking thinking about you or when you did something. Other five other comedy nerds are because they am. have the same I, fear. You're thinking of it. I, I'm thinking I, of yeah. it. No one who watches you do that thing, they laugh or they don't laugh. And that's I'm not the worried end of about that. them. It's the same thing I was saying with Bo. It's that mm. it's that once I feel that what I'm doing isn't unique to me, yes. there's a defeated thing where it's like, I got to find something new. Right. And it stops me from perfecting stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, that's... But I think driven by this notion that someone would have seen the the one that came two weeks after yours, then somehow seen yours, it wouldn't do anything, <laughs> right? It just—I know it won't. Yeah, it's it's. But what, what you're really looking at, and and I, I've tried to use this in moments where I hate my face on television, where I I watch my breakthrough was was Craig T. Nelson, right? I'm watching him in a scene, and I'm like, this man is so attractive. He is just the most attractive man. Craig T. Nelson. Mm-hmm. Every time he's on screen, I'm excited and I'm I'm riveted. And I, I realized, oh, nobody looks at a human being and stares at my left nostril that's incongruous with my right nostril. That's not how people interpret other human beings. They I look at Craig T. Nelson, this whole orb of a person mm-hmm. with this character in his uniqueness and this, and it's just one big thing I look at, and I either find it attractive or I don't. So what are you saying? You being insecure about a nostril is a waste of time? Is, is, what was I saying? We were talking about... About uh, people 
Uh, oh, oh. So you're 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 focused on this sliver of time where you've created this thing that maybe is being ripped off. But what you're forgetting is that people who like you've been watching you for six years be completely interesting and endlessly creative. I'm not looking at today yeah. for my verdict on Rick Glassman. Uh, you you have this whole thing that we're in yet a page of the book of the enlightenment. What comes from the understanding that life isn't the podcast and i put so much time and energy and it's unhealthy and betty and i've been talking about this because this is just an episode that comes out mm -hmm. but to me it's it's so much work mm -hmm. and also especially with you and i mean it's just like i want it's better now. It's easy for me now because I understand this is a moment in time and that's the only perfection that you could have is being there with it. And I get that. Yeah. But like, I care so much. Yeah, I yeah. Ca I care too much. I imagine for you, it would be really hard to parse out which is productive and which is destructive. Because I could see you... Mm -hmm. Clearly, this all, this all these isms are part of what makes you so productive. And well, that's the thing about work ethic. If I if I wasn't forced by caring, and caring is a kind way of calling it that, uh -huh. obsessing, mm -hmm. then I'm not doing the work. If it's if it doesn't if it doesn't matter enough, which is almost everything, mm -hmm. then what's the fucking point? I, I don't do stuff unless it really matters. But I would argue that the reason you feel that way is because you're still in your mind building something uh -huh. like the, it's it's ch -ch 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 -ch. like this is great and then this is great and then i have more followers and then blah, blah. like everything is in this this sense that it, it is results oriented right it's like it's getting you to some god knows what place is in your mind yeah the two that, the that two is, big ones are taking you to the two big ones are um being in control of of making money uh-huh uh and building uh building an audience right stand up sketches movie whatever yeah. it is but like people know me now yeah and i could i don't have to rely on being cast for something to make a living yes so i, I am not claiming i had this peace of mind because i did not i was identical to you so i'm owning identical that. to me with what i was building 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 i right, was right, trying right. to get to there and there and there and with there the and podcast there. or with your career a everything every single fucking thing i did from 1995 until i don't know a few years ago now um i've been like gifted so much mm -hmm. i'm not saying that in a saccharine way i have so fucking much like the 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 way my podcast worked out it was so incon inconceivable to me and yet here it is so i'm not tr i'm not building anything i'm at a place i couldn't have dreamt of it being and i guess if anything i'd like it to stay where it's at like i'm not mm -hmm. that's so and what that's given me is um it is only about this I'm only doing it because this conversation, you guys, you and I won't schedule. We just won't. We what love you, each you're other. Saying if it weren't for podcasting, yes, we're only yeah. doing this because of this silly excuse to do it. This podcast, yeah. but this is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, truly, I connect with that big time. And in the state of flow you get into, which you could only relate for me to motorcycle riding, maybe for you basketball, whatever it is, like. Uh, the, the the augmenting of time that happens while you're doing this. I don't know if we've been doing this for 11 minutes or 43 minutes. I don't know. That's so euphoric to me. So for me, it's um, I am grateful to be at a place where it is just about process. And by the way, they don't get worse <laughs> or better if that's all it's about. I, I think. Right. It, it, you can have faith. I would. I would. Maybe this will hit home because uh, he's our other Chappelle. I would imagine for you as well is Bill Murray. So Bill Murray's on Letterman. <clears throat> Letterman says, do you recognize that you created a comedic paradigm that has just gone on for 30 years? Like that everyone's virtually doing what you created in the 80s. And of course, that's hard for him to take that compliment. But the Letterman goes, how are you so good? How are you consistently just so good? And he said, if I can slow down, breathe, and know that it always comes to me. Yeah, I know. I always part. have it. I'm good. Yeah. And I heard that and I was like, oh my God, could it really be like that? Could I have that faith in myself that just existing it'll happen? And I've been working very hard towards that ever since hearing that quote. And I do feel more and more like I don't need a game plan. I don't I just need to sit down and be me. I have faith 
in me will produce something that because you have enough experience that you have cultivated something that not everybody has um which is it's easy for me to say the instincts of this yeah but but again it's very easy for me to say this just because my show works it's it's working lots of people listen to it so i know it's easy for me to say this but but it is also true that now i'm just like oh no i'm I'm about this. This is what I'm about. Yeah. This is why I like it. Well, and, that's and, what you're and, about outside of the podcast. Like, it just so happens that you went for and found a media that is literally what, what, I do your, for what a you hobby. do, what your yeah. strength is. Right. Connecting right, with right. people and talking and having strong points of view about stuff. Yeah. And getting challenged in, in uh, yeah, w- working it out. How much does it help you to have, and you're going to speak as candidly as you're consciously able to. Yeah. But how much of having... When I say Monica, I don't mean Monica. I mean another person there with you to help control, guide, and work off of. How much does that help you? And could you think of any cons that it has? And to make it, take it even less away from Monica, mm-hmm. I'm speak because I'm like I don't have a Monica, and I've right. thought to myself how much I could benefit from that. Mm. So I understand that. Why do I not have that? Do you feel that there's, for better or worse, what would happen if you didn't have that thing? Is that question, is that fair to ask? It is. I mean, it's clearly dicey because I'm going to evaluate in public uh, the whole thing. But I, I, none of this is secret. But A, it's totally evolved. So like at the beginning. Can I give you more coffee? Because I wouldn't mind pouring me a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get wild. It almost looks like um, Kahlua or, or Bailey's. That's because they're adding the oat milk. Mm. Uh, oh, man. The, Delicious as well. The... Um, so two things that uh, have happened that uh, I want to, uh, I don't quite understand past, oh, well, it's Dax, I guess. But there's, and don't change anything. I'm, okay. I mean this. Um, that stuff that's on those blankets right now. Driving you nuts? Not at all. Oh, really? But it normally would. It's impossible for that to ever <laughs> have happened. Okay. Now, I also know that I, could, I can and will, will be washing the blanket. Okay. But that's the logical side, just completely owning the emotional side. Well, let me at least make it so you only have to wash one. It's, it's not going to change anything. Uh, what I'm saying, everything's getting what I'm saying is fumigated. What I'm saying is what what I'm saying is what everybody is saying. Who gives a shit? But I'm able to connect to that. And also, it's hard though. For, yeah, but when you're here, it's not. Uh-huh. Uh, also, and I, I'm wrong for this. That I'm right for not caring. This I'm wrong for not caring. But just to show you, I I didn't wa- Do you wash the top of your cans? No, no, no. You know how gross the top of your cans are? I'll often take like a paper towel and rub it, but I will not like soap and, soap water. and water. Soap and water. Oh, you'll do in that. In fact, before you got here, because I, I had a few of those, mm-hmm. soap and water. No kidding. Now we're in it. I I, I, I looked at it. I said, let's get to the conversation. Uh-huh. So either thank you uh-huh. or... This is not, though, a, a unique phenomenon. You know that basketball player who had Tourette's? Do you know that guy? I forget his name. Um, in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s i forget his name but um when he's playing basketball there there's no Tourette's. was that i mean are you that far removed from basketball when he's playing basketball double dribble um he's fine then he gets on the uh bench waiting to be put in and he's very busy there's a lot of stuff going on and put that also while we're on this conversation let's not have that as close to the edge this okay great i'll put it right in the middle for you will that make you feel safest yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Okay, um, so yeah, when you're concentrating on something stronger, it it, it, it can be I'm diminished. Conce- right? I'm concentrating with other guests. That that's not happening. Really? Yeah. Okay. And it's not about wanting you to think something about me. Like I don't want him to think I'm difficult because I feel I think, easily you know, safe ex- with you. Yeah, you know I've accepted. It's all just your- it's not it doesn't it's not mattering to me. So that I don't know what that is. I guess like I'm filled with enough whatever yeah. it is where it's just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's maybe nice. I make you feel safe. It's not. It's it, yeah, yes. But that's not what it is. Okay. Because I feel safe. I feel. I mean, I don't. There's nobody I've met that makes me feel safer than her. Betty. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. just. She's fantastic. Grab her pussy. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> but but <laughs> you see some ass cheek. Take a squeeze. But I I, I can't. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I no. Can we revisit that? Do you think if you had um, what would have happened if you observed it? 
oh, I confront it immediately. Yeah. But that's not a thought. That's an instinct. Right, 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 right. The, the, the yeah, ins- no, but it's all past. That's what's tricky about that situation. Well, it's, it's, is it's like, over. She made it out of that. It can't be, it can't be fixed. So the right. only thing that I would be doing Adding more would, is proving wreckage. to her mm-hmm. something that, that can I, can I go on a yes, little thing? Yes, of course. Um, I had a, I don't love revealing orders of guests because I just feel it's wrong, but I had somebody on yesterday who uh-huh. I think is coming out the week after you. Okay. Um, Joe Maganello. Do you know well, who that is? Yeah. Um, uh, B- Bill. Bill. Yeah. And yeah. he was talking about being, you know, having having the arm out for the girl and being the, you know, slaying the dragon and this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, lo- I love that. I just have been fortunate enough to not, I, my women have not been around many dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll yeah, make them laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're selling a different thing. But what he said was, uh, oh, I had gotten a conversation because I have a bit about opening the car door for a girl, mm-hmm. which it's my pleasure to do if we're coming from, if we're coming from the passenger side. Right, but right, But if we're coming right. from the driver's side, um, it's manipulation. It seems crazy. Crazy. Yeah. If, go yeah. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, 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 I would do it if someone needed it. But the notion that someone would allow me to inconvenience myself that much for some weird thing would make me nervous about them i I couldn't accept that let's put it that way if you yes i'd let you open my door if we were going to cross it first but if you were going to come around i'd be like don't do that for me that's crazy yeah now that's i'm not right you're not right that's just the way we see things so preference so if i did it i'd be lying Mm. Mm -hmm. so i would i I have gone the, the when i do talk about this on stage it's about the neuroses of when I'm going around the front of the car, she knows that I'm lying. And I have to, if I don't tell her, then, <laughs> then you know, I'm setting myself up for something. If I do tell her, I have to find some type of a shtick. And that's why I'm forced to be funny and exhausting because I have to go, oh, keep your hands and feet in the vehicle. Uh-huh. And I just, I don't like this. He's saying you have to do it. So okay. if you need it, your hands are full. Or you've said to me, I know this is crazy, but there's just something that it does for me. Would you mind right. getting, I, then I want to do it. because. Yep. Yeah, you st- stated a need I can meet. When this Roman man grabbed her ass, uh-huh. there's nothing she needed from me. Uh, it's done. Yeah, yeah. If it's happening, there's something that's needed. Yeah. I w- we were lucky that nothing happened from it. Yeah. But yeah. We, now, we now know, a minute later, nothing happened from it. Other than her uncomfort, which matters, but it's, right. there's nothing I could do about that. Right. Anyway. Yeah, you would have been adding more chaos and carnage to something that was already shitty. But what it would have done, it, it would, but it would have made me, it would have made me look cool. It would have made you look cool. For me, it would have again, it would have uh, slaked my desire to let people know they can't get away with stuff. Because again, in my childhood, people got away with stuff, and now I, I, I on my watch, that will not happen. No one will get away with anything, is which is exhausting. Do you you have your thing that's exhausting? This thing in me is exhausting for the people around me. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Because they, they, they let so much stuff roll off their back. It's true. It, it doesn't really... Do you let stuff roll off your back that other people can't? Yeah. 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 I think that's what I'm saying. We, we all have our little grab bag of triggers from our childhood, and uh, uh, there's stuff that I don't give a fuck about that boggles people. Like, I've, I've, I've landed at the airport... Went to get on my motorcycle. It's been stolen. I literally spend five seconds thinking about it, and then I go get in a cab. Is I'm that like, a money thing? No, I, no. This is when I was broke. That like it meant something. Why but is it? I because it's out of your get, control. I can get right to the fact that it is gone. No thinking about it's getting it back. It's time to move on to the next thing, and I, I refuse to suffer even more than it's gonna make me suffer that this thing's been stolen. There's no, like you said. There's nothing you could do to fix it. It's over. That's when it's easier. And that's yeah. kind of the ass grabbing for me. Yes, I, I get it. Uh, that's why I asked if you saw it in progress, it'd be, it'd be a different scenario. I don't, I, I could honestly tell you, I don't know what I would do because I know that it's hard to, to know that. But what I could tell you what I think I would do, um, which is, I'm not, I'm not punching him in the face. Right. right. Um, it's a, uh, hey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And it would give him the opportunity to either be like taking what I want, and then that's where I'm going somewhere, or him being like, I, 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 I'm a I pederist. Saw it. I don't know. This is what we do in Rome. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm, Congratulations, she's beautiful. And I'd be like, all right, man. Oh. It's kind of like when someone cuts you off, but then waves. Mm-mm, you know, mm-mm. those are Jedi's. I don't have it in me to do that. To wave after I've just clearly cut someone off. You know. Oh, that would be me being dishonest and opening the door. It's like I can't now. But, add insult to injury. 
But I do it. My, the reason I wave is because I I want to be in front of you. And if I'm not in front of you, it's going to take three more minutes. So it's worth it to me. Um, but I know, it, you know, I'm taking a little something from you, but I'm getting a lot more. So I've, I've, I've decided to take what I want and acknowledge that I took it from you. See, I think that's dishonest. Like, you're a selfish dick, and now you're trying to act like a nice guy who cares that that person was inconvenienced. Like, just own the fact that you were a selfish dick. You cut in front of someone. I think we have a difference live, of definition. Live with the shame of having been caught being a dick. You don't have to play a dick in order to acknowledge that you were one. Right. I, by waving, that is my acknowledgement. Yeah. And also, I don't think that I'm being a dick, and here's why. I, when somebody does it to me, and I'm not talking about does this, I have to slam on my brakes. Yeah. I'm talking you're going over Laurel and you're getting to Mulholland and, and there's enough of a gap and somebody kind of scoops in and yeah. I have to tap the brake a little. I go, yeah, I do the same. Uh, well, that's, that's big of you. That's I, I say you. out loud, mm. yeah, I do the same. I do, that's when, great. That's the dream is that you could recognize that they're just doing what you would do. I, I was, went to a play with my buddy John and uh, during intermission, uh, there's a big, you know, that's when people pee and poo. Yeah. Wait, huge line, huge line. Always. I went to, I didn't know how far the thing went. So I'm right here where it's a regular line. And then I see, oh, fuck. So I'm already here. And I go to the guy. I go, it's, so it's around a bend, right? Yeah. So like I'm here. And then I, I, I notice there's all this. Yeah. So these people don't see me. Right. Nobody gives a shit. No, nope. yeah. my, my mind. So I go to the guy. I go, can I, let me, can I? Yeah, yeah. Because of course he's going to say yes. Because I would be like, yeah, great move. Yeah, of uh -huh, course. Uh -huh. He goes, absolutely not. Oh. And I was flabbergasted uh -huh. at how crazy this guy was. Uh -huh. Still am, but brought down a little when my friend John is like, I wouldn't have let you in. Yeah. I was like, why? Yeah. Give a penny, take a penny. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have either. But again, you know, I, I, I am unforgiving of things I do. So I'm not acting above doing what you did. But I'm also acknowledging I probably would not have let you in either. Uh, I like to schmooze. I'm a hypocrite. A I'm a hypocrite. That's, like, that's not a hypocrite because you wouldn't do it. I can see myself. Well, I said I can see myself doing oh, what you did, and I can see myself saying no. So gotcha. I'm, I'm acknowledging I'm a hypocrite. Like, I, I feel I can cut off people like that. I can cut someone, or I can scoop someone. But also, if I see someone about What's to scoop? try, to, why'd you correct cut off? Scoop is not quite slamming, right? Scoop is just like someone saw a window, they took it. You, as you say, you don't have to slam on your brakes. Yeah. Just you, you left a, a big scoop, enough gap. They, yeah, they, they, they scooped you. And uh, But if I see someone about to scoop me, I'm going to intervene. This is deplorable about me, but I'm just being honest Ooh, with you. When you see, what about even less than a scoop is a turning I, signal. Are you somebody that when somebody you're trying to get over and that you see them, you kind of speed up to make them have to go behind you? It all depends because I'm Oof. generally driving backwards. So I'm watching everyone behind me. As I've admitted, I'm, a, I'm the sheriff. This is terrible, <laughs> but I'm like, who's an asshole behind me? <laughs> okay. And then. So you're looking uh, for the uh, asshole. You're I'm looking gonna, for the fight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop that. Yeah, I'm going to intervene for That's everyone. That's interesting. It's, I'm it's exhausting. I'm way better at it now. It used to be maddening to be in a car with me. It's gotten much, much better. And and I even do things as a practice. Like, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna let this person in. They're not even trying to get in. I'm gonna go ahead, hop in. You know, I make myself do these things. I I love coming up to a a, a stop a stoplight um, where here's stoplight, here's the cars, mm -hmm. but right here is an opening from a driveway, a business, or whatever. Yeah, I love. Even if there's room behind me, if, if I could go in front of me and there's still room behind, yeah. I don't trust that the person behind me will... I love stopping here and going, go ahead. Yeah. Look, I'm, look, yeah. I'm, you're on the road looking for the asshole. I'm looking for somebody to come over. Yeah. I'm looking for a friend. It's, but it's preferred. Um, I, I will do it, but it is painful. I hate giving up that 21 feet of progress. I, I got to get everywhere I'm going immediately. I'm so impatient. When I let somebody in and they don't... Wave. You're apple I'm following them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Uh -huh. How could they not? Uh huh. So I obviously am doing it for something. Mm hmm. Uh, but it's all very complicated. Could we go back to the um, Monica? Yeah. And uh, because we had Monica on the paddle planes, we're gonna. I love her. Oh. And I told you it was one of my favorite. I think I said it was my because it's been tough. I mm. moved and that she was on the balcony. Yeah. I've been going through a bit of a funk. Uh -huh. uh, I'm still there, but I'm on the upswing. Okay. She was the first one who was like, this is what I want to be doing. Right. Loved. Yes. So I, I, I want to be candid when I say, this isn't about Monica. This is about having a, a, a podcast partner. host, having a partner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, pros and cons, yes. specifically. So first and foremost, it, it has evolved dramatically. So if you listen to early episodes of the show, the, she talks way less. Mm -hmm. Because A, these were generally people that I knew. I was asking favors for people to come on the show. Pr prior to people want, just wanting to be on the show, it was many favors. They know me. They're meeting Monica for the first time. Yeah. And they don't know anything about her. So, uh, and they have a rapport with me and they don't want to be there. So, whatever. It's a favor. They don't want to me. be there. No one wants to be anywhere. This is the oh, you're Seinfeld saying, thing. Oh, you're saying the, the people that are your guests. The guests. Yeah, right. yeah. They don't want to be there. And they're there because I asked them to. Yeah. And we're friends. So yeah, they're, they're, they're tiger, uh, tar tiger. They're target locking me. Target locking. They're target locking me. And so she was left out a lot. And um, that was hard interpersonally because this is our show. And she's not getting to talk much. And the fact check became this great place to discover how wonderful she is and how brilliant she is and over time she talks more and more and more with that said an interview can't really be conducted by two people like someone has to have the map in some sense and so it'll only it, it there's a I think there's a limit to how egalitarian it could ever be. I don't know what egalitarian means. Dead equal. Where she talks, we put it through a computer and we both spoke the same By amount. dead equal you talk yeah, you're talking words or time spoken. Yes. I I don't think a, an interview can be conducted that way. Or at least I've not seen it. You've not seen any famous interviewers as a pair. Right. Also, outside of interviewing, that's not a thing. Nobody touches the ball the same amount. I mean Yeah, so, so I understand. So um, she has taught, she's been more involved uh, gradually over the last three and a half years, which I love. Three and a half years? Yeah. That's how long that's it's just been a, going. That's wild. How long has yours been going? Two? A little over two. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just remember being in your attic when you were talking about it. And it, it's that, you know, sometimes time is oh. shocking. As you age, it gets more and more shocking uh -huh. every day. I was journaling. Two days ago, and I put the fucking date, and I was like, 6, 1, 21? We're <laughs> halfway through 21? I th we just left 20. I get that just way when I'm looking for my birth date on a thing. Uh -huh. You know, when you're, you, 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 uh, uh, where you, you type month, day, and then you have to scroll down to 1984 oh, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, it's we're getting... a, lot, a lot of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like United States is at the bottom because it's a U, but you know to go down there. I even was thinking recently that more and more now they're asking me to put in all four digits of my birth year because it's it's being 75 is insufficient. Like I will get to a point where yeah. that will not make sense. I was I told Betty the other day, it's going to be weird that, you know, in 70 years from now, people are going to be talking about the 20s. Mm -hmm. Very bizarre. Um, okay, so back to her. Now, the value... Uh, so. The, That's give me a little the, more of a push. Oh, right, right. Thank you. The The price is the interpersonal relationship that we have in that I want her to feel, to feel fulfilled on the show. Right. So there's a stress I've taken on that you don't have. Right. I care about her, and I, I want her, the experience to be everything uh, for her that it is for me. So it's like you're hosting her almost. Well, just we're, we're best friends and I want her at the end of an interview to feel great. Not, Oh my God, I didn't talk one time. No one made any room for me. No one asked me a question. I, that and feeling great is there's multiple feeling greats. There's having a product that's great. Mm -hmm. And then there's feeling that you offered value to it. Right. And, or that you were validated by the guests. Uh, many of the guests we interview, we, we admire. Right. Like I knew when we interviewed Amy Poehler, like, be cognizant of this. This is Monica's hero. This is her hero. And so, you have to, what, pass her the ball? Well, just, I want her to get validated in the way that I, I wanted Bill Gates to validate me. Yeah. I want her to get what I got. Yeah. So that's just an added dynamic that can be stressful. It also is infinitely more rewarding because I'm sharing this success with somebody. We're, I'm reflecting with somebody yeah. about, oh my God, you remember we, we were begging to get this guest and they said no and then uh, Bill Gates was here or whatever. Like uh -huh. I, I have someone to reflect with. That's wonderful. So yeah, there's a little price to pay, but then there's also a big reward with it. And then I'll say what, what, it, what it does for the show, which is, um, is incredibly valuable, is that I am a white dude who's talking nonstop. I'm super opinionate, opinionated. I want to explore 
topics that are dicey, that are like on the verge of getting canceled if you do it wrong. And having Monica there is a very strong presence and voice to challenge me, correct me, give a female point of view, give a uh, person of color point of view. Without that, I would not be able to do what I want most to do, which is have a trans guest on, which I just did, and talk about the Olympics. You know, I might be on the wrong side of that argument, but I want to have it in public and I want everyone to feel safe that there is another perspective that will check mine. Yeah. I don't... Mm, here's my issue sometimes, it, and this is rare, but we'll get into some of these more challenging conversations. I can list them. I happen to have an unpopular opinion that the uh, Georgia shooter, um, you know, that want, people want to label that a hate crime. I tend to think it's a sexual shame crime induced by uh, religion. The guy's a fucking deplorable piece of shit. There's no question there. It's just I'm curious how we would prevent it. And I don't know if if he loved Asians that would prevent it. If I make that point on my own, I'm going to get blasted as I should. But I have Monica there who totally disagrees. And then I had Seth Rogen as a guest who also totally disagrees. So it was really two on one. And I would I would hope that we we have space in this culture of ours to hear different opinions. Everyone's respectful. You heard them. There was no verdict declared. So I wasn't right. They weren't right. No one was declared a winner. You just got to hear every side of this argument. I want that to exist. And yeah. it can't exist with just me. You said on the Prince Harry... Harry? Yeah, Prince Harry, Harry interview. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Um, <laughs> you know... <laughs> I had the same problem when I first posted it. I, I, I posted Prince Henry. His name is Henry, so I kind of dodged that bullet. But yeah, I got confused as well as you just did. That's it's really Henry. funny. His real name, his birth name, he's got like six first names. And the first of the six first names is Henry. This is like my Uncle Bob having so many phone numbers. It's yeah. like, which one do we, we call? It's, like, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, for, uh, Prince also, Harry. Incidentally, on that episode, uh, and I did rewind it, I think it was that episode, you got your name wrong. Did I? You said I'm Dan Shepard. Oh, I always do that. Oh, that's a thing? Yes. Have I not known that? I, yeah, you missed that. I, I, I almost never say Dak Shepard. Oh, I'm, I only noticed it consciously, at least on that one. Oh, yeah. Is always, it always I, Dan or is it always something different? Dan Shepard, Dan Rather. I go by Dan Rather a lot. Um, any name. Okay. I just, the whole notion that I need to tell you who I am, if you listen to my podcast, seems hysterical to me. That's how I feel about headshots. That's why I have a fake headshot. It's yes. just like, this, this is what I look like. Yeah. I also, when comics get off stage and tell you who they've been, thank you so much. I've been Dak Shepard. It's like, who are you now? Oh, they do that? So many people get off um, to, to remind people. All right, this has been great. My, uh, I've been Rick Glass. It's I am, uh -huh. but it's I've been. Oh, Thank wow. you. This has been great. I've been Rick Glassman. I hope you enjoy the rest of your show because I've been doing stand-up for you. Yeah, I, I've never heard oh, that. Oh, yeah. I always oh, go, who are you now? That's a bummer. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> talked about how uh, I think it was something about Rogan. Rogan? Oh, yeah, yeah. Rogan. Yeah. yeah. Same, same, same. Uh, how he wears, how he was anti this or that or masks up. And you're like, well, he's not a scientist. And then the prince said, uh, the prince, I'm just nervous <laughs> that I was going to say it wrong again, uh -huh. said, um, yeah, but with a platform, you have a responsibility. And yeah. he's right. He's yeah, right. Everyone's right. <laughs> everyone's wrong. But yeah, or, same thing. Yeah, they're either all wrong yeah. or they're all right. But just because he's right doesn't change the fact that like, you know, th there could be a hundred Peter Parkers. And only so many of them are going to take on the great responsibility. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just I, I know that's in other superheroes, but with great responsibility, great power comes great responsibility. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I guess, I guess. Yeah, look, look. look. Well, let, let me make the point. Oh, I'm making. Okay, okay, okay. The point I'm making of that is, I agree with that. Um, that you have to be careful with what you're saying, but if if you trust your instincts enough, and at least what you're saying is honest to what you believe. Right. Then it's, I agree with your point. This is some, this is a, an addendum to it about having somebody there, multiple people there with other perspectives, but like, it's a bummer that there is a need, not from you, but from the audience that this has to be there. Well, I disagree I, because what can get maddening is I used to, for fun, I used to drive cross country for a job, right? And I would, and this was before uh, 
mp3 players and all the stuff so i would regularly be out in the middle of utah with no radio stations other than am radio and i loved listening to rush limbaugh who made me furious right the bubble you like being in a bubble you're talking about yeah i just i just i, I for whatever reason i loved because i guess i was bored and tired and he made me agitated and angry <laughs> and and i used it as fuel when i would drive across country <laughs> what can be maddening is to hear someone present a, an opinion and you have a different one and you're in your car going, but fucking you're ignoring blank. Yeah. That's what yeah. gets, I think, maddening as a listener. Yeah. That's what I sometimes get frustrated by. So I think if in the perfect scenario, both sides are really being represented. And by the way, she's, it's not like yeah. she is a great foil. She's got better grades than I did. She is very, very smart and she's very opinionated and she's very strong. So, you're i think it's it invites everyone because you're gonna your side's gonna get a day in court and i like that yeah yeah I, you're right Yeah. um not having that uh <laughs> it's a bummer that i that it's a bummer because because uh -huh. like I, it puts you in the role of what's so weird is it feels like a compromise but it's actually not because because you don't have someone else, uh, it puts you in the position of having to police yourself all the time. And what would be more fun is yeah. to um, be you, and it's okay to be you and be wrong, and to be on the wrong side of history, and to be on the wrong side of a debate, and to be like that's the dream is that like you could be an example of someone who's just um, being honest, and then through the honesty you might learn something. I've like I've changed my position on a dozen things in the last three years on the podcast. I've been wrong, and. As long as I'm, I'm I hope uh, I'm keeping this promise with people that like I I am coachable. I I will I want to evolve and be a better person. Then I think you can you can get through some of the times where I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, well I, I've already conceded that I I know I don't know anything. So uh, uh, and that's not just like a I'm not a financial advisor. So do your you know do yeah, your yeah. due diligence. I mean I I, I know I know some things. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. So it's not just like that. I might be wrong. It's a it's a worry that the policing thing. I I feel it. I feel the responsibility to do the guest. I had a, a, a my cousin on once. Okay. And I'm gonna repeat what he said. And I don't think it's bad, but you'll let me know. Uh huh. But in the moment, I didn't know. So I felt that if I don't acknowledge this, yeah, then I am condoning it. Right. But I don't know anything. So what am I acknowledging? He said he said Afghanis. Yeah, I also want to apologize to the to the country of Afghanistan for the <laughs> last podcast. I made some comments. As far as I'm concerned, Afghanis have fucking beautiful dogs. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, you don't have to validate. Yeah, yeah, Just make right. the hash. Hold right. on. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Bro, that's what you're saying. They have beautiful trash. dogs. I love the <laughs> Afghan. I love the Afghans. For, 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 before you were born, I would have you, Af you, Afghan you, dog. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You I, love I, Afghan like, dogs. I, my, I like Afghan dogs too. You know, I, you know, I love <laughs> Afghanistan. I love the whole concept of Afghanistan. <laughs> What's the concept that you love? Fucking hats. Okay. Okay. Make the make the weed. I like the fucking hats. Uh huh. Okay. There's something for some reason the way he said it. He goes, yeah, no, this and that, and the Afghanis. It felt like, like, well, I said, I don't know if what you said is wrong, but like, yeah, are you allowed yeah, to say yeah, Afghanis? Yeah, oh, yeah. I love, I love the Afghani horses. I love their rugs. Uh huh. I'm like, all right, are you now just like saying I don't like wings, but these wings are delicious? Like, uh -huh. what do you? That's a very mild example. No, but you're right. That word immediately, and you're like, ooh, I hope that's the right. Yeah, way. yeah. Like yeah. you could say Jews, but if well, you, if you're you gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. It's you have to be. I, I don't think people know that. I don't think Jews is derogatory. But, no, but you can't say ish. You know, like that's what people think. Oh, you can't say the whole thing. Yeah, and yeah. It's it's. I guess it's yeah. You're you're. What you're doing is you're getting out of saying Jewish people because you can't add ish. You also got to say people. That's well, when you it's got not, to. It, well, to you can't just say the Jewish love synagogue. Yeah, but could you, you got to say, say the Jewish people, or you got to say Jews love the synagogue. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just a it's an efficiency thing. So having somebody there, I could see that as a benefit, and um, it's more fun. It's playful, especially like you know the fact check's my favorite part. Like I love what it. I love is that um, she and I, through the luck of chemistry, can sit down and just create content. I think that's so awesome. Yeah, you guys are very very good together, and like you and I could do that. And that's not something you can do with everybody. I it's would a, love to. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I hey, mean. hey, push in. Hey, Dax, 
We don't even have to post them. No, okay. yeah. But you know what I'm saying? There's, there's something like I, 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 I get a bang out of the fact that she and I can sit down and have the goal of, of correcting some some inaccuracies of the previous episode and then never get to that and find something really fun to chat about. And then, of course, I'll add to one other great thing about having her is the live shows. If I were out there solely by myself, uh, that would be it would probably be less enjoyable. Yeah, I'm starting to do live shows. Oh, well, I good. haven't yet. Uh, oh. I'm actually, uh, I think it already came out by the time this did. But uh, I'm doing my first live show as a test, literally from the living room, just like streaming it and people oh, got okay. tickets to it. Um, but I'm doing that as a test to see. But I have so, I'm have so excited about live shows. But yeah, yeah uh, I, I don't feel the same as you uh. because I, I already made the decision that my guests will have to be comedians, at least at first. Yeah. Comedians will fill the place of what having a co-host yeah. would. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody to make that you're, I'm comfortable with a comic even if I've never met him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's just even the safety net of like, I walk out on stage first, I greet all the arm cherries. I might and you do say, theaters? Yeah. Yeah? How yeah. many people are in a theater that you would, before COVID? 4,000? Um, 1,000? Yeah. 4,000? We've done 6,000, I think, in, in San Francisco at that big ass place. I think wow. um, Chicago Theater might be 5,000. 4,500 Do you make more money we off of an ad or off 5,000 tickets? Oh, tickets. Why not do more? Well, because... Um, well, A, we've done a ton. I bet we've done 25 live shows really? in the last three years. Yeah, I would I would think that many. Um, the stress of the guests is the only downside. Because I love going out to a city. We, right, you we, have to get a guest at that city. Or I got to fly someone there. I've had people that were in a blackout and missed three flights. I've had people have panic attacks in their hotel room before the show started. I mean, it's just a lot to take on right. a, a, another human being. And God knows what's happening with them. I've had a uh, guess the fucking all flights got canceled out of Florida. So what happens? You cancel the show? Uh, no, in that case, I interviewed Monica, which had never been done. Uh, now I think everyone knows Monica so well that 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 wouldn't fly. But yeah, I don't know. The time that someone was having a panic attack, I, on stage, right? I no, know. No, 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 no. Um, it, it text me. I'm in my bathtub having a panic attack. I'm gonna be late. Panic attack because of the fear of doing a live. Who knows? This is 40 minutes before the show starts, and I start thinking, what do I do in this city? I know a professional baseball player in Austin. I text him, hey, do you know any famous baseball players in the city I'm in? And can they get here in 20 minutes? I mean, that is stressful. And yeah, what the fuck am I going to do if th they don't show up? So that part of it is very stressful. Right. What I'm trying to do is um, we have this other show called Armchair and Dangerous, which I love. And it's a conspiracy show. We do it like once a month. And we have this amazing dude, David Ferrier, who's a Kiwi. And he's really funny and really interesting. A Kiwi person. <laughs> okay, a Kiwi people. Yeah. Um, and so it has occurred to me like, oh, we could do that show live. And then I don't have any guests. And then I'd want to do them. Um, I'd want to do 25 a year. I love them. It's just the guest aspect, which you'll soon discover. So, uh, it's, the, so it's one of the hardest part of the podcasting. And that's not even live. Just right. getting guests. And, and now, now, like, by the way, you're going to be in front of a few thousand people. Uh, maybe they're not stage people, you know. That's why I, I need to do comedians at first. Yeah. Or, and I'm going to say this now, at some point, if I'm doing this, I would love to have you on a live show. Oh, I would do it. I love the live show experience. I, I'm very excited so for fun. it. so fun. But you're right. The comedians are uh, I'm incredible. Because I've that's had, that's what we that's that's what we do. Normally, we do this without you. I, I know. <laughs> and and my, my, um, my format for it, I'm excited about. I have a few things, but the, a big device that I want to start doing in my living room, too. I don't have a... Uh, people doing lights but right. is i want to have the stage it's going to be a living room shoes will be off and you know it's it's going to i want it to yeah. feel like this because i want to put them on online also but i will have a uh, a microphone stand microphone for whenever if i have a musician who wants to sing is uh -huh. or actually you know what you know like, you know you're going to do a monologue i have I, I could talk on this for two minutes uh -huh. the guest or i will stand up i don't even say anything go over to that lights go off spotlight comes on yeah and they're doing a monologue yeah you know or yeah, a stand-up yeah, yeah. set yeah. or whatever and then to put it back in i ha i only had that once and it was so fun to be a part of i had dave keckner on in chicago <clears throat> uh at the chicago theater and through no prompting of mine yeah he would start telling a story and then he'd fucking get yeah, up yeah, yeah. and he'd go to the edge of the stage and he started communicating with the audience and i was like 
this is bonkers. I've now gotten myself in a situation where I'm like, not only do I have a front row seat, I'm behind the, the stand-up. The it, opposite it, of when you're driving. Yes. When you're looking back at it. Yes, I'm looking forward at the back of him. Truly mm -hmm. the opposite. And I'm like, well, this worked out delightfully. I'm getting to watch Dave Keckner perform yeah. at a show that's supposed to be my show. This is heaven. Uh-huh. Yeah. Comics, man. That's why you should film in 4K, by the way, in case you need you to get wanna, that. You want to slowly push, push, push. But you, I was saying, if, if Keckner, if you're here, if Keckner gets up, I have Oh, I you have, have the this. latitude. I have the latitude. Yeah, you do. But you were saying you go out first. Mm-hmm. And just about the time that I'm thinking I've probably run my uh -huh. course with entertaining them. <laughs> Which is how long? Depends how funny I am that night. Are, are, how, what are you doing? How's everybody doing? I'm talking about the city. Uh huh. You, you, I'm observing some things about the city. Could I'm, you do what would if you were people coming bring in here? signs? I'm acknowledging signs. I'm who's uh, what's the farthest someone's come uh, to see this show? In in our case, we've had people from Australia who have fucking flown to the U.S. to this. see a show, wow. which is mind blowing. I also cry sometimes. I get like I get welled up because they what? it's like, so what sincere that yeah. they like the show that much and they're that excited and i get emotional and generally bob who wrote our theme song he plays first and he'll play this bob mervak bob mervak he'll play um this springsteen song i love when he sings so much so i'll be in the wings waiting to go out and then i'm teared up because i look oh my god bob is are you holding the, Mike? the microphone yeah i come out with a cordless is there a voice of god before and ladies and gentlemen please or do you just go no, out cold? no i go out yeah yeah i don't like that um, I hate introductions, and, I, and that's neither here nor there. But but Bob, Bob is this insanely brilliant musician that lives in Michigan, and through this fun collaboration that we've created, he's on stage all over the country in front of tons of people. So then that fills me with like all this emotion, and then I go out there, and the people are so fucking nice, and it's unreal how nice arm cherries are. It's unreal. And so I'm just emotional. Anyways, I chat with everyone. And just about the time I'm like, well, I'm out of stuff. I go, I brought this little woodland creature. She was in my bag on the airplane. And I bring Monica out. And mm -hmm. people go bananas. So it's like just, a reset. Yes, yeah, just that safety net of like, it, whenever it's time, I just transition into now here's Monica. And they love her. And then she comes out and fires t-shirts out of a cannon sometimes. Which was something that I wanted to do and probably won't now. Although if I do, I'll always bring you up. Do it. I've just, for years Don't, I thought about listen, it. Listen, forget about what anyone but you. Haven't you always wanted to fire a t-shirt cannon? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I do it. I also I like to shoot a t-shirt cannon. I fucking hit someone on accident in the front row. That's I, fine though, right? It's okay. They lived, it was scared. Did they get hurt? Um the the guy in the front row ducked and it just went right into another guy's eye, and I was panicked. But also laughing hysterically because uh -huh. it was such a fucking blunder on my part. Like, of course, I just shot someone in the eye. The show hasn't started. It all worked out. But it was it was touch and go for a second. I didn't know if I was going to get sued. I want to tell you an anecdote of that that, uh, that happening with me. Yeah. And we'll do that right up. You know what? I think we got the ads in. Did we? So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise with more than 50 years as a family owned business, we've got you covered. And we're back. I bought, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but there was a bunch of, uh, there was a time when you were a stand-up comic, if you, if you were doing, if you were hustling properly, you go to Vistaprint, you get yourself some business cards that has your website, your phone number, way too much information that you shouldn't be giving, yeah. that you hand out to people who don't want it after shows. Right. That's how you become, that's how you buy a house. Uh-huh. So I had a, a stack of business cards, <laughs> and I'm doing my first, one of my first headlining shows uh -huh. down in San Diego. I go with my buddy, John DeWalt, Brent Moore, and put it in the and I'm, uh, I'm the headliner. Yeah. Right? This is yeah, my show. Yeah. So I have that this extra adrenaline. At yeah. the end, I have this callback of something that comes in, this energy, and we're all on stage, and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, and I take uh, you know, this, this uh, handful of business cards. I mean, hundreds of business cards. Yeah. This, right? Yeah. And... You know, I wanted to confetti down, right. so you just throw it, chuck and it. I chucked it, but the whole stack just hit the guy in the front and uh, blew up on his face. Yes. And then he just, yeah. uh, and he was okay, you know, and I'm laughing and like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's but, a genuine laugh, because you're like, oh my God, am I fucked? Uh, yeah. What an idiot I am. What an idiot. And then, yeah. and then the, 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 the also just the behind the scenes of like, 
for, I mean, realistically 10 minutes of cleaning up, like me walking around the place, picking up these business cards while people are leaving, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to leave a mess slash you also need to hand them out in uh -huh. the future. I did hear from, I want to say it was, maybe Nick Kroll told me that they, they did a live show and they had a t-shirt cannon and they fired it and they broke a fucking chandelier that rained glass down on people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's that's as bad as it can go. I think my my attraction to the to the t uh, the t shirt gun during a podcast interview was the fact that it is a get on your feet thing. Uh -huh. But I wanted it to, to be like the same when I snapped a commercial. So that's in and then fire. Yeah, you know, just yeah, like yeah, have yeah, like yeah. you want a shirt type of thing. Now you know, as you tour these theaters, you have a rider, which I didn't even know much about. I heard legendarily, right? Some people want like only green M and M's or whatever the lore is about these I've heard riders. That spe specific one. I think we both heard that from Wayne's World too, by the way. Oh, sure, that that could be it. Um, so the, we have one, and really, it's just we need the canister because you can't travel with the CO two canister. So our rider is like we get there, and there's two. Full so you have your own cans. gun that you could travel we with? We travel with the gun. That's your only rider? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe Diet Red Bull. I indulge you in drink those that? on show night. Why not a coffee? Yeah, there's a, there's another gear somewhere in that Diet Red Bull. I mean, uh, I'm drinking coffee for sure, but I, I I'll indulge. I'll allow myself because I don't. I generally don't let myself drink it. Pardon my candor. Is that an addict in you that feels you need that gear? Oh, sure. And yeah. do you need do you, no, do you need I that gear? Need no, not at all. I think about but you do these little things, right? Like I interview a race car driver, and it's like, oh, Tom Brady, you have this routine. Yeah, you're taking right. control of the things you you know you can control, which is like, oh, I go there. There's going to be six Diet Red Bulls in there. I'm going to allow myself to have one before the show. I'm going to take one out on stage with me. Because it makes you better. It's something I can control, and I can't control the show. So it's just a little yeah. routine that's like I'm doing. Oh, I'm on schedule. This is last time I did this. This was a great show. Could you advise me of knowing the difference? Because I love weed. Uh huh. And it it does something to me that I I could to tell you I really believe that uh you know when 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 it would do this and it has and it can it makes me better at X. Uh huh. It unlocks or it locks whatever the thing is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And. There's really not that much of a cost to it when I'm at home editing and I feel like I don't feel and I take a, a weed or if I'm just with friends and right. Yeah. But there are times where I there are times that I want I want to go on stage high and that's never a problem for me and I'll uh, do it. I right. mean, maybe I sh should. Maybe I shouldn't. But that's not the point. I just yeah. I this is a high night, baby. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. Yeah. Then there are times where I feel like I don't want to go on stage. So I take the weed because that'll allow me to. And uh -huh. I used to do that. I used to do that. And now I don't do that because I feel like I've heard stories from you and other people where I, I want to do something when I want to, not because I need to. And I don't yeah. even know why. Yeah. But now I catch myself sometimes ask, do I feel that I need to do this? Or, and then it starts the calculating. Racket, yeah, yeah. And do I need to care? Is there a way to tell the difference? It's so weird. I just was having this conversation with my wife. It's really hard to delineate between an addiction per se and just habitual behavior. So I have two cups of coffee every morning. I will never find myself in a situation where I don't have my two cups of coffee. When I travel, we've had a couple cups here. Cheers. Cheers. Careful. Oh, you're going to give me a little more. This is wonderful. Oh, man. This is wonderful. This is, um, you've taken it to an, another, a new height with having this coffee. Cause last time we didn't do this. Also, I would never have interrupted for a cheers, but I'm flattered that mm. you were like, let's, you know, like, yeah, uh, uh Lahayim? Yeah. Lahayim yeah. people. Lahayim people. Love synagogues. Lahayim persons. <laughs> um, Kristen, uh, habits, two coffees oh, in the morning. Right. So, like I'm on this show, Top Gear. We often stay at terrible motels around the country because we're shooting in the desert. There's no place to stay. I have taken to traveling with a Keurig in my suitcase and pots. I don't now travel without that. I'm never going to let myself be in a position where I don't have coffee uh -huh. in the morning, right? Yeah. 
But I don't have any moral attachment to that. I'm not, I don't feel like I've lost control or I can't be me there's without it. There's no downside it. to it. I don't, I don't even evaluate it. Yeah. Is why, that because why there's no I? downside? There's no wreckage. What's, it, what's the wreckage? No one in my life is like, do you really have to drink that much coffee? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is weird because it's, it's an abstract thought. Weed, I think, is one that's really, really hard to assess because I interviewed Seth Rogen the other day. He's high all day long. He tells you he's high all day long. His life seemingly is fantastic. No one in his life has an issue with it. He's super creative and right. productive. Why would he question it? I don't see what, what it just just this this theoretical issue that one shouldn't be altered all the time. That life should be enough to not be altered. I guess that's what you would hinge the argument on. But what does that mean? I guess the argument would more so be less about what am I missing in life because if I'm liking this and I'm liking this versus. Is there a cost? Am I like, you know, you see um, my, my I mean, it's just a reveal device. It's been done in everything. But my favorite one of my favorite examples is in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The the uh, high school reunion episode. Have you seen and or remember that? No, they're they didn't like high school for all their different reasons. And yeah, they're yeah. going back and I'm going to kiss this girl. Or I'm going to beat this guy up or I'm, yeah. I'm going to show how successful or whatever. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. And yeah. all the seeds are planted and watered beautifully. And they come together at the end where they. Uh, this, these people that hated these people now they're unbelievable they have this choreographed dance number everyone is watching this thing it's amazing you know the uh -huh. lighting is great and then it's just a, a, a then what's his name who you've had on who's um, you know the, the, oh, the Rob McElhaney yes um, yeah. he uh, uh, does this Michael Jackson spin and rips his shirt off ah, and it's amazing and then it's just a snap to reality of uh, and it's just showing they see it like this and then they're showing they look horrible. Uh -huh. They're, he's fatter. There's yeah, drool. Yeah, yeah. He's past. It's just like, <laughs> this is what we think we look like. Uh -huh. You know, it's that, but it's just done masterfully. masterfully. Yeah. That is where I go because I have this thing that I'm grateful for that my mom accidentally gave me, which is I am very good at what I do, you know, and, uh -huh. and, and I'm, I would rather have... I've, I think I've told you this. I've never walked out on an audition where I didn't feel like nailed it. You oh, know? wow. What a, that's great. The opposite. Is, I would rather this than the other way. Because the truth is, who knows? But yeah. I want to feel good. There's been zero correlation between the things I've booked and the things I haven't yeah. based on how I felt about it. So at least let me feel like I'm talented. Yeah, if given the option. Then, as you know, the blinders come off a little bit. And I uh -huh. realize there's a chance small as it might be uh -huh. that I wasn't great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have no idea. So when I have weed, I, I, even though I now, when I'm, when I'm sober, I know I don't know. When I'm on weed, I know, Rick, you're on weed, but also, no, dude, you're brilliant. Uh -huh. And I wonder, am I? Because if I am, if yeah. I am, then I need to be doing it more. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Sure. And how will I ever know? Well, I would, I would, um. I would bring in Danny Kahneman at this point. The, Danny! The, 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 come out here. World famous psychologist Danny Kahneman. You know, he has this thing about how humans evaluate their life. And there are two of us, right? There's the experiential mm -hmm. self. And, and right now, the experiential Ricky and Dax are loving this coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, the narrative self, the one that's writing a story about our life, which is, we're just as busy doing that, is going to get in bed tonight and going to have a hard time falling asleep and going, I wish you weren't the type of person that could, that didn't have to drink coffee at 4 p.m. Right. You're saying because the caffeine, not because of the regret. Well, I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah. The, the regret that I'm not. But I'm saying, are you up at night because of the caffeine or are you up at night because I made the wrong choice? No, because I drank caffeine. Right, right. Yes, but so um, uh, another a better example of experiential self uh, versus narrative self is I'm on my phone looking at Instagram. It's awesome the whole hour and a half I do it. There's not one point while I'm doing it that I'm not enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. If you pause me and say, are you liking what you're doing? Yes, I love this. Then I go to bed at night and I go like, I spent an hour and a half of my day staring at this yeah. screen. I don't want to be that person. That that's the narrative self, right? You're 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 writing the story of your life at night before bed, and you're not pleased with the yeah. lead character uh -huh. staring at a phone for an hour and a half. So I think life is this tug of war sometimes between like who you want to be and who you're just enjoying being. And I don't think anyone should commit to either side of that fully. I want to have more dopamine. But it in sounds my body. to me like the narrative Rick doesn't want him to smoke pot all the time. 
But yeah. it sounds like the experiential self never has a problem with Rick smoking pot. All outside, the time. it's a different thing. But outside of the fact that sometimes I, it makes me eat a certain way, I get I sleep yeah, in or yeah, my yeah, joint yeah. stuff, which is why I first stopped, and then that's where it started from. It started from well, maybe there are some downsides to weed, and they're not the narrative side, I guess, is from, yeah. in this definition. But it made me first question to be like, maybe I shouldn't. And outside of that, I I don't know. I don't know. There's something about. That the way I used to be, which was unaware, blissfully, mm -hmm. I got lucky, I think, mm. that the things I didn't know about were things I maybe shouldn't have put too much pressure on anyway. Uh huh. It was like, there's nothing I could have done about it. I mean, you know, yeah, there's an yeah, equilibrium yeah. that maybe I didn't reach. But, but now I'm in this place to where I'm calculating so much that weed kind of brings me back to this thing of like, who cares? Just wave. Whatever. Uh, I want to go in. If they don't like it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. So, so what is the downside? I, th I feel like it's just that you don't want to be is, a person who smokes weed all the time. The downside is, the downside is I can't, I can't see what he looks like. Like I, I've been spending the last three, four years trying to understand how I'm perceived, mm -hmm. and and it, I it, with your work in your autism. Yeah, maybe autism, but just. Well, three and a half years is so specific, isn't that it about the time? That you... was the ins that's that's what started it with, yeah, yeah. with the diagnosis, right? But I don't know if it's all because of autism. Okay, I just know yeah, that yeah. that's where it opened this door of like, oh, here are some things I didn't realize sh could be obstacles, or yeah, like for, I'll give you a perfect example. It's happening right now. I hate when this happens, and it slows the momentum of the podcast. But I'm becoming so insecure about how much I'm talking about something. Oh, uh -huh. that maybe it's too much, maybe it's not. But by bringing it up now, it's it's. Steve Martin says, never let the audience know you're bombing. Uh, ah. But now I'm insecure and I'm not present. I'm just talking too much about something. I have so many things I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. And enough with the fucking who gives a shit. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But, you know, um, podcasting is hard, man. I think that's um, coming in. OK, there's a great saying in AA. I give it to everyone for free, which is expectations are resentments waiting to happen. And I fully believe that. Some dude gave the best example of this in a meeting. He said he was flying from New York to L.A. And in the air, the pilot came in and said, we're going to be touching down about 45 minutes early. Should have you at the gate at 3.09. And this person went, oh, great. Be, that'll be just before rush hour now. Now I'm going to beat rush hour. And then, oh, so I can have dinner with so-and-so. That right, built a whole life on this update that they were gonna be 45 minutes early, then landed and their gate wasn't ready and sat there for 32 minutes and became irrationally upset. Everything was falling apart. Now I'm gonna be in rush hour. Now I can't have dinner with so-and-so. Now I can buy. All that happened was uh, for a minute, it looked like they were gonna be 40 minutes early. Yeah. And, then, and then in reality, they were just exactly on time. Uh, the original expectation was that he was going to land at this time, but then the expectation changed and now he's fucking furious and has ruined his entire night. And I'm like, oh yeah, I do that all the time, all day long. So uh, I, tr I really try to not have an expectation. On my way over here, it didn't cross my mind what this would be. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I did either. Okay, good. Then you should not give a fuck about talking too much or too little because th there was no game plan to talk a lot or a little. Yeah, that's well, that's the side that I... When weed, it makes it even harder to see. That's the side where there is these things, and I don't know which one it is, and it's that that makes me anxious. It's that that it's like, are my instincts not good when that's what I rely on? Uh -huh. Does that make sense? When you're high? In general, my the reason I'm okay being high, the reason why I, th I think I'm okay, I'm good at high, is because my instincts are so fucking sharp that getting high doesn't get in the way of it. Right, 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 right. The, the, the problem is when I'm not completely present, and then I'm, I'm looking, and... Even if I like what I see, which who knows if I would, just by design of looking, I'm not here anymore. And that makes me, ah, I, uh -huh. I, I can't rely on the instincts if I'm not in my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Also, podcasting is hard. And I'm <laughs> accepting that. You know, it's, it's a process. It's so hard. I'm talking Is to it you. hard? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, you make it look very easy. When I watch you, I think it's very, very easy for you. Be You're never without something to say. I don't think it's hard to have a conversation. Okay, I, it, it's hard. It's it's just hard. You know, like lifting weights is hard, and you're getting stronger, and it looks good. Yeah, it, but it's 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 difficult. It's taxing. After this, I'm tired. Oh, there's okay. so much editing. I I have to well, set up early, and I I I. 
you know, I mean, I mean, yes, I'm trying, that, that part of it is is objectively exhausting. The fact that you're going to have to edit this and fucking upload all this footage and all that. But shit. But also, I have to I have to care when I say this, which this is what I want. Cameras are off. Will you still do it with me? Yeah. However, cameras are on. And now I'm going like this. Check this out, everyone. Uh huh. And uh -huh. it's like I am I am forcing myself to care which is very, is, is the antithesis of what, what makes we you work good. on. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to have to. Yeah. Should I not have, I did know. we need to, should I have toasted? Should I, I wish I have done there more was animation? a switch on your back I could flip for you. Will but you? I think it's an age thing. And I think it's a uh, getting the bucket filled thing. It's an age thing. I didn't have it until the, this year. Oh, it's getting, okay. Then that's the opposite of what I yeah. feel like. Unless I can't determine... What I know is that I have a much different relationship with this whole experience. Podcasting. Show business. Yeah, yeah. Show business. Is podcasting show business for you? Yeah. Well, it is, right? You, you, you're, you're entertaining people, fingers crossed, and yeah, then you monetize yeah. it. So it's show business. I think of it as, as, as like, if we were to do a show together, this isn't it. This is the, the, the director's commentary, the behind, the, I'm showing people something I normally wouldn't have. Okay. So this doesn't feel like that to me. And maybe it would be easier if I started seeing this as, this is just another product like that. It is. This feels per more personal. I mean, I hate to force you and myself to admit this uh, 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 in real time, but you and I arrogantly have determined that we are entertaining to listen to you talk. You would never have en endeavored on this if you didn't think that I'm interesting to listen to. But we are. Right. Why is that? A, I don't understand the we've. Well, that's a pretty uh, arrogant thing to admit. Why? Why is it? Because, well, you're just saying I think I'm really interesting. That sounds a little arrogant. I'm, no? I'm, I, I, I would like to, I, I'm not like over, I, I'm truthfully, yeah. I'm disconnected on this. There is, I, I am funny and interesting. Mm -hmm. You are funny and interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not the most tactful thing to admit. I mean, I'm willing to Ta do it. What, what is the opposite of tact? Um, Humble? No, that, tact, tact is proceeding with some humility. like um, For the sake of it? Like opening instead the Instead of saying, door? you're a shitty fucking employee and you're fired. You go, look, we were hoping that someone would come in and do X, Y, and Z, and you have a different skill set. Do so the opposite. Don't do a negative because we're doing a positive. Give an okay. example of a positive. A positive. Because you're shitty. You should have tact because you're packaging something that's hard to digest. Yes. And I think, well, it goes back to my thing that I said earlier, like, uh, let someone brag for you. I don't want to hear Will Ferrell say, I know I'm a brilliant comedian. This isn't about us saying we're interesting or not. You were just saying that's what we feel and we think. We are doing this because we think that. We think that we are interesting enough to fill an hour or two of content. Okay. Real time. Yeah. I, yeah. We are. <laughs> yes. Right. But so I'm, I'm sorry. And, and I, please, I hope I didn't get you too off track because I like this. And I feel I might actually find confidence in it. Yeah, yeah. But what do you... What? So once you've decided that, and you've thus far proven that, <clears throat> why on earth are you evaluating it? Like, there must be a point in your life that you're Bill Murray and you stop evaluating that. You accept... That's what's so weird is you're quick to admit you're interesting and good, yet you're afraid to say you're permanently interesting and good. Here's what it is. Okay. And I've said that, I said this on the Mark Norman podcast, different context. This is about stand-up. I have 60 minutes of funny in me a day. Oh. I, you think that? I know that. Oh, okay. Maybe it's 45, maybe it's an hour 20. Okay. But yeah, um, this is in direct relation to my uh, understanding of energy being tangible and finite. Uh-huh. And, you know, you were talking about this on the, I don't remember which one, but it was about adrenaline and how it's unsustainable. Well, Prince Harry was, yeah. Um, he was saying there's, that. There's only so much that I have to give. And the craft is being able to control it. The craft is being able to go on stage and doing it now, right? The craft is being able to, as an actor, having a sense, you know, you could give a great performance. What if you don't have it that day? That's the job. Everybody can do something sometimes. It's can you be consistent? Yeah. S Steve Martin said the same thing too. Anybody could be great. It's could you consistently be good? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So knowing that I only have 60 minutes of funny, or of interesting, or... Well, here's where we truly differ. Okay. We truly differ. I don't feel like I'm hitting the go button. I feel like this is exactly what it's like to be around me all the time. At dinner, driving somewhere, 
I'm not. Betty, are you, you're not leaving, are you? Oh, I wanted to bring you in for a second to talk about when the guy in Rome grabbed your butt. Somebody threw a vest on the front door? Oh, now's your time. Uh oh, that fell out of my person. I had worked out before and I had a tank top and I had it on my motorcycle, but I don't have pockets, so it was just tucked in my shirt. Problem solved. Yeah, yeah, that's fine if you don't mind touching Buddy, it. Buddy, are you sure you're, you're going? Are you, what are you Ubering? Watch this. Do you feel safe? Is everything okay? Is there anything I could do? All right, I love you. Nice meeting you, Betty. I love that you're calling it a vest. It's a, wife a wife beater, I tank top, a shirt. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy the movie. Uh, I feel a little bad that I'm not taking her, but it's okay. You know, it's that ship has sailed. Kind of like the ass grab. It's over. She is. I could say Dax. What is that? That is my uh, ring camera thing when it when oh, somebody approaches the door. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, so you're saying this is just what you are? Yeah. I, I don't, it's not, I mean, naturally, if I get around someone in an interview, I want their approval. So th another uh, layer of oh, energy oh, takes right. over for yeah. sure. But other than that, I, I'm not putting on a show. Now, I think me is a show. That's the arrogance. I think just being with me in the kitchen is entertaining. Yeah. Um, so I don't see an end to it. Like I'm not, I'm not reaching. I'm not stretching. Yeah. I'm just existing. I respond to things in a way that is sometimes entertaining to people. Uh, you know, there's no shelf life for it. Tell me what you think of this. Podcasting is what you're talking about, and I'm, I, I'm getting that a little bit. Podcasting is that you're just in the living room with us. Yeah. The, uh, the, well, right. hold on. You have carved out a little different thing for yourself than I have, which makes sense that you'd have some anxiety. Yours is definitely more comedic. Like yours is comedic. You have all the all the uh, sometimes all the animation stuff you do is very very comedic. Um, mine is you're almost promised something emotional, uh, hopefully at some point in it. So there is a different expectation for an episode of your show versus an episode of my show. Also, it's you know this isn't an hour special or a two hour special. And that's what I have to keep reminding myself. You don't, outside of podcasting too, you know, you don't always have to be funny. Right. Or, right, you, right, or right, right. you don't always have to be interesting. I find always funny exhausting. I can't listen to someone be funny for more than an hour. That's what I'm saying. Like, or you don't see stand up specials that are two hours. Yeah. Has there ever been one? I mean, it's people have done, Chappelle does three, four, five hour sets. Does he? Yeah. Oh, I love him. I remember there was something where uh, at the Laugh Factory, I just remember, I don't remember if it was beef or just people making up beef, but Chappelle did four hours and then Dane Cook went up the next night and did five hours so he could do more or <laughs> something. I don't know if that's true or not. I just remember that. And that's when I first like, P what do you do for five hours? I think Dane ordered pizza for people because uh, it went late. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, I, but you know what's interesting is you keep referencing... Steve Martin and I keep referencing Bill Murray. Yeah. And I think therein lies our different objectives. Because Steve Martin puts together a show. He's meticulous. He pulls the banjo out. He's Everything's written. He, yeah. right? And then Bill Murray is more of a figure that exists in relation to all these other people. And it's so unique. I'm so drawn to it. But there's no, nothing. Yeah. Is, nothing's planned. I would love to get to that. Um, I think a, a big, big, a big obstacle is quite literally production. Uh huh. If if you weren't coming to my house while I'm setting up, and I didn't ask you to come over, if instead my job was to show up on set and just bring all I bring is myself, yeah, I think that would be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Could I talk to you about uh, about money? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to tell people what I have, but, but I I'll, could ask, I'll acknowledge. I have but a lot I could of money. ask you anything I want to ask you. Yeah. Yes. I do not need to be protected. You do not need to worry about. I won't, an like you said, I'll cut out something. I just won't answer something I don't want to answer. Okay. I'm a big boy. Uh, this is not. How much money do you have? <laughs> how much money do you have? <laughs> I know how much money you make relatively, just knowing what ads are and your numbers. Yeah. Right? yeah or relative right. numbers. Yeah. You could extrapolate. I could extrapolate. Mm -hmm. um, 
But what I want to know is going to Spotify, mm -hmm. which uh, exclusive means at best the same numbers, more realistically, less numbers. Well, that's exactly how I thought of it initially. So, right, I would agree with you on that statement. But what you're not considering or what I hadn't considered is, A, they have 150 million subscribers. They have the tools by which to drive traffic to shows. They want this to be a very successful thing for them. So they're incentivized to, right. for me to leave there with way more listeners, right? Or, or right. not leave there. So you're saying that's... basically, even though you were on Spotify before, if you're not exclusive, they're not going to push... They'll know. And in, 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 in one of the things they said to me was like, how much advertising have you done for your show? And I'm like, nothing. I post on my Instagram. Like, I've never taken an ad yeah, out yeah, for yeah. our show. I've never placed it on another Betty podcast. Betty acknowledged how so often you get such PR uh, from stuff uh, all over the place. From and the guests. Yeah, for the interview, yeah. the guest on your podcast. It's right. from things they said on your podcast. And Betty was like, uh, you know, strategizing. Betty helps produce this now with me. And she okay. helps me with things and comes up with ideas. And, what, and and I said, and maybe I'm wrong, but Dax doesn't have a PR people for that. That's just what happens, right? Correct. I don't. It is literally Rob, Monica, and I. That right. is it. Uh, and then lock stop. There's now, eyes on it. We have a couple editors that we use as well. But I'm saying there's no, P, there's no advertising. No, no, there's no, there's no public relations. There's no agents involved. There's nothing. It's just us three. Okay. Yeah. So now Spotify. Okay. Yeah. So, um, they were like, you know, how much have you promoted the show? Not, not at all. I mean, I've been on talk shows and it comes up, but I've, I've never, there's never been an ad taken out for armchair expert. There's never been a billboard for armchair expert. There's nothing. And so they're like, we want to advertise your show. Like we want to get as many people to check out your show as possible because we think it's great and i think if people check it out they're going to stay so you're right uh previously i would have said best case scenario everyone that listens migrates over there it's a free fucking app i don't know why they want it but some people are yeah creatures of habit i get it um but there is a, a chance that it'll grow there do you uh when you made the decision was going through the numbers relevant relevant uh, my money numbers. Yeah. Shockingly less than I would have ever predicted because we make great money already. We you're, already make plenty of money. I have to imagine you're going to make more money. Otherwise, you wouldn't have done it. We're two things. Um, we are. Well, it's hard to know because if you track, if, if you if you charted what we made year one, year two, year three, we've gone up consistently by a lot every year could i for my uh, you audience could extrapolate that could i do the numbers and you don't have to say anything but okay go ahead I, i'm curious to hear what your guess is okay uh okay my guess would be that um will you tell me your listening numbers if i guess could you say if i'm like at least within 70 percent of it i just oh. it's weird now because I, I love this stuff but i'm we're in public so I, I'm, exactly I, like, I would tell you anything off mic but I, let me tell you something i've learned about money People hate people with money. I hated people with money. I was broke. I have a chip on my shoulder about rich people. I'm one of the yeah. people. I'm thinking people of armchair hate expert people with money. money. I know. Not you, but you're I right. I know, but people don't like it. Like one of the things that people I think like about Chris and I is that we don't live in a fucking mansion. We I don't drive a Bentley. Like you cannot underestimate yeah, how okay. aggravating it is uh, to know someone's got a ton and you have nothing. I, I recognize that. And, I, and I'm... Yeah. I'm conscious of that and I, I would never want to, to me. rub uh me to rub the fact that i've made a lot of money and also i don't want to patronize people so yes i make a lot of money i i don't have the worries that i used to have covid in quarantine was a lot easier for us like i will own all the privileges we have but i also recognize that money makes people hate people because when i'll tell you how i know it i'll say something on the podcast that is fucking innocuous. It has nothing to do with money. And I'll read responses that are like, yeah, if I was fucking rich. Yeah. I, and it's like, yeah, it's yeah, always, yeah. if you hate yeah. me, if I've said something that's pissed you off, you're going to pretty much go straight to, well, if I was fucking rich right. and live behind gates and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't, I don't deserve that. I came from a fucking dirt road and I did all this myself. No one knocked on my door and said, you want a million bucks? So you know, I feel indignant about the fact that I'm not, I'm not a trust fund kid. I didn't fuck, you know, Yeah. but it's just a big murky mire. I've only seen a few people that got super rich and people were excited for them. For some reason, Stern fans loved it. I loved it. I loved that he got fucking rich. I, I hope they give him $9 billion. Is it because you knew him before he was? 
and because he was a scrapper and he didn't prioritize money he got himself fired he stayed true and then this thing opened up this unexplored territory took a big risk and it resulted in hundreds of millions of dollars and i love it M- number and it was late in his career too i don't know if he if, if at 41 years old he made a billion dollars i would have been excited i don't know yeah. i just know that money's fucking tricky numbers and it's a bizarre in our country too because we all are holding on to the American dream that they that everyone might be the next millionaire. So we fight. We pay a great cost to accept that, that we would rather not have higher taxes or we'd rather not do all these different things to preserve the notion that you can go from me, dirt road, to rich. Yet when people do it, we fucking hate it. It's so, it's so weird. I believe you, but I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. Like, I want to hear... The stats. I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see the I subscriber too, numbers. I want to know. Yes. What could I? What could I make if I do a fraction of this stuff? Uh huh. Yeah. Because I said to people, I'm going to say stuff. I'm going to get this out of people that I know whose podcasts are not as uh, successful as yours. Okay. But are good podcast, like big podcasts, are making uh, between ten and fifteen thousand dollars an ad. This was uh, a year ago, so I don't know if numbers changed over the past year. But don't say anything. But uh-huh. I'm going to assume. You got to be at least in that range. Uh, yeah, this yeah. is okay, right? I mean, I know yeah, you said yeah, I don't yeah, have to yeah. protect you, but I'm no. Literally, I'll talk to you on the phone and tell you exactly what we. Should get. I stop talking about this? No, I'm just. I'm not gonna say what we make. So I want to because know. I wouldn't like. Let me talk about me. Okay, great. Would I? Here's then. Here's the thesis of this. Would I go to Spotify? And what kind of money would they have to offer me? mm Hmm. Yeah, I guess I can't. I guess this maybe this was a big fucking waste. I just no. I think what you're you know that it would be you'd be mad at yourself if you didn't ask me about Spotify. Like if I come here and we talk for two hours and you don't bring up Spotify, which of course is a big deal, and people know there's probably a lot of money behind it, and it must have been a decision that I had to make where I prioritized money. Like you got to ask that question. I respect that. I don't uh, is. Uh, and maybe I was curious think about, about it. it. Look, when I it's heard sabotage, when right? I heard Joe Rogan win, I, immediately I want to know how much he got. As I want public, to know for how it? many years it is. I'm I'm counting his money. I'm going. Well, he has even more listeners than we do, and I know what I make. So you know, oh, he must be. You know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm counting everyone else's money. It's a hobby of mine. It's not the one I'm proudest of, but yeah, I'm super nosy when it comes to what people are making. So I, I would expect everyone to know, want to know exactly what I'm making. And then I also, from self-preservation, yeah. I don't want people to hate me. Like, yeah, we got crazy rewarded for something that we just love doing. What's my job as a podcast host to make my guest feel safe and not not uh, blindsided by from a question versus being honest and asking what you want to ask. Yeah, so, well, I can just tell you how, like, I would approach this, because I've had people on that have made tons of money and it's been public. I had, um... Oh, fuck me. One went down? Yeah, I... It just went out on its own. Yeah, and there's times where... When it's not, I come back and... And it's somebody who I really liked, and they're uh, out of focus oh. the whole time. It happened a lot with the window because Ooh. of that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's just whatever. yeah. Um, but let's we could go on. So here's, I think there's something I'm interested even more shockingly that because I am a greedy little pig and I'm nosy and I count people's money. That is a fact about me. Also, what I'm ultimately way more curious about is I have tons of financial fear. I have lived with it forever. I remember at your house once you you accidentally I don't know if I saw you told me uh, your coffee machine accidentally did a cup of coffee and you couldn't drink it it wasn't at the right time and no Kimmel fucking turned it on and, and I lost my mind. I had I had I had put it all there so that in the morning it would brew at 6 a.m. or whatever time it was. So it was all set. And then he went and turned it on just to fuck with me. And then I got really, I was like, God, that's fucking, it's probably like $4 in coffee. And I got to pour this down the fucking thing. And then I, I remade it and he did it again. Uh, it's great. It was a great bit for him and everyone, everyone involved because I cared way too much uh-huh. about this pot of coffee. Whatever. What interests me more is because I'm at the point in life where I'm more questioning all the things I was sold. So I want to know what I'm more interested in 
um, is do you feel safe now? Uh, what are your fears? What are the numbers that would make you feel safe? Has this done anything to you? Like, I guess if I were you, you were on my show, I'm a, I would say I'm assuming you're getting X amount of dollars. Um, has it sh shut the racket off in your brain? But I can't ask you that until I know and could understand what those numbers are. But I would argue that what is more relevant is that, and this is why I say it, it wasn't as financially motivated as you might think. I don't know. Well, I'll Who tell cares? you. I'll tell you because we already make great money. Right. And the trajectory was that we were going to make even more great money. So it wasn't that. I'm reasonable and I'm not as arrogant as I am. I'm not that cocky. I don't know where this industry is going in the next three years. I don't know. I know they're going to start. They're going to tell you if someone really listened to your ad. Yeah, they, I, I, th there's I, a lot of things that like are going to happen. Be this lucrative in there, the future. There, there's 2.2 million podcasts today. Every one of our peers wants in on this because mm -hmm. they've heard you can make good money on it. So the competition yeah. is exploding. Uh -huh. There's 2.2 million. Maybe in three years, there's six million. I have a really good show now. I don't know if once I'm competing with the whole world that my show will be as good. So this gives you a contract, basically. I. I desire the safety of it. Like I could have maybe done better on my own. I don't know. This is a great fucking thing. And they're going to support us. This is a win for How us. How many years is it for? Three years. And after three years, is there an option? Do you both have to agree? Does it go back to completely yours? We would both have to agree. And if you don't, then it's as if you never were with them. That's right. I take the whole, everything I created while I was there, it just comes back to right. me. It's not a sale. You know, it's just, I'm there exclusively. And then when that ends, I'm, and, but, but, but I got to add one other element, which is, um, Monica's 33. I'm taken care of. I'm good. Uh, between Kristen and Frozen and me and the podcast and all the ad stuff we do. Frozen. I'm, uh, yeah, you've not heard of this. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, we're fine. Yeah. Everything is fine. I actually feel fine, which is crazy. Cause yeah, you've told me that you haven't not too long ago. Yes. I it, Well, I finally admitted to myself that it will never be linked to reality. Right. Like, it was. Or, I was already safe. I just didn't allow myself to feel safe. That's a three-hour endeavor. But I want Monica to fucking buy a sweet house and yeah. I want her to fucking pay it off and I want her to remodel it and I want her to be set. I love her. I want her, like, I, I'm making a decision that's not just me. It's Rob that's who's great. got a young kid. So, yeah, it's not just me. It's it's two other people who I care a lot about and who I would love to see safe as well. Uh, outside of money, just money is a question that sometimes is this. Anything. When but you well, I want to just be clear. In real life, I'm not that way. I, I actually, for our business, I, I probably I talk too much about money. Like I, I don't. I'm not that hung up on it because I think it's like Rob McElhenney and I. He's from a fucking row house in Philadelphia. When he and I get together, we're both like, "Are you fucking kidding? You got a show that's gone 13 yeah. years, and I'm going to spot." But like, we talk about it. We, we, I. I, I I'm that way too, but I, but some, yeah, some people aren't. So when you're on public, you have to, yeah, be received a certain way. I mm -hmm, get that. Mm -hmm. But what if it's not money? What if it's um, having uh, talking about you know there was some infidelity, but which is public, but maybe they don't want to talk about it or whatever the thing is. To where I I am hosting you. I want you to feel safe, mm -hmm. but I also this is my job. Uh huh. Um, how you know everyone has their own tools i'm asking what are yours and broaching beforehand do you tell like i say which i said to you on this one but i do tell people by the way if there's ever a topic you just got to let me know yeah, yeah yeah which makes me feel comfortable of not censoring yeah but if you know that like yeah let's let's take you have somebody on who there was uh there's rumors of infidelity that you want to talk about because you're interested and you uh, you know or anything that's that's that could be scandalous that you don't want it to be too self-serving for the product, but also this is the medium. Yeah. Um, well, I think, and this is why you are in a perfect position to have a great show, and I think this is why I'm in a good position to have a good show, is we have a lot of different things we could deliver. So if someone doesn't want to talk very openly about their thing, I have comedy to go to. I can make a funny episode. I can make a funny episode. I can make a sincere episode. Right. I can have a guest that sucks and just tell stories about myself. I have <laughs> enough of them. You know, there's a lot of options. So I think when we first started, I very much wanted people. 
I want it to be an AA meeting that people could go to who have never been to one. And I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to say everything. And if you feel compelled to join me, I want that. And I want you to have the experience of, oh my God, I just said this thing that I'm ashamed of and no one cared. People liked it. They didn't brag on me. Like that's what I wanted this to be. But I pushed, I think, the first year to get that. And now I don't. I tell revealing stories about myself every 10 minutes. And quite often, that opens someone else up to want to tell their story. So when that happens, that's why how I want it to happen. I don't ever want you to be listening going like, I, I'm not Barbara Walters. It's not like I'm going to go like, now we got to talk about the cheating. I'll just say, I've cheated on every girlfriend I've ever had. I fucking hate that about myself. I needed approval endlessly. I've never met a woman I didn't want approval from. You know, if I say that and then you want to join in, then cool, you wanted to join in. Yeah. So I think in general, if I have that kind of curiosity, I, I start. And if they don't pick up the ball, I get it. They so don't is want that to a, talk about is this. That, is that a device? Is that like a tool? Like if I want to hear about your bowling, I would say, you know, I once almost bowled a perfect game. I bowled the first 10 strikes. Mm -hmm. and I, I, but my reason is, to, is fishing. Does that ever feel, is that what it is? That's not my motivation. I can like say from the bottom of my heart because I go to AA, I've been going for 17 years. I share about a failure as a parent. And then lo and behold, six other dads have something they want to get off their chest. The whole experience is fucking lovely. We all feel yeah. less alone. We've all fucked up. We've all failed. We all leave there feeling better. That's my goal on the podcast. So I'm, I can promise you, I'm not trying to get a headline. We've never promoted. We've never, if we showed clips of something, we've never shown a gotcha thing. We've never put right. in the description. We talk, we don't do that. Um, people end up saying really revealing things. Unfortunately, sometimes that stuff gets picked up in the media and I'm bummed. Do you ever have people that afterwards ask you not to put something in? Well, we offer that to everyone. So everyone that comes on the show, we say anything you think of tonight that you regret saying, yeah. Um, you tell us and we cut it out. I'm not a news outlet. Like I, I'm, I'm here to show what the third dimension of this person you think you might know, and and I and I hope in it you'll you'll feel less alone. That's my goal. Is you're thinking like, oh, Prince Harry, he lives this life, and then you find out like, oh no, he didn't live that life, huh? Okay, that's the goal. Could you tell me, uh, Mon the reason why I feel like I would benefit from somebody like Monica um, is because of Monica, not just like having another person there. Betty is very, I, I, I've wanted to, and she said she might, Betty does not like being on the camera much. Uh -huh. um, I think she would be, they have a very similar thing, at least yeah. for what I would need. Yeah. Um, uh, Monica has this thing that just, even when she was my guest, it's just helpful. It's, she could take the reins. Yeah. Um, she'll ask me. It's just easy. It's very yeah, easy. She's a pro. Is there something that you have learned from her that you do now? Does that make sense? Because I have tools for my comedian friends. There are sh there's some shtick or games or devices or oh no, that I do that I know. Oh, that's from Brent. That's yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or is it just that you don't need to I don't learn need she to does do it because she's there. And I got to say, what I've really come to love about her is she has started stepping up and asking that question you're talking about. Like, that must have made you... Like, she's gotten very assertive in kind of getting more of that thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I will take a stab at it. And then if they don't take the bait, I don't really push. Right. And I've come... This is, by the way, what I love about her as a business partner, which is we talk to this advertiser and they say this and I'm about to kind of roll over and go with it. And she goes, no, that's not what we do. And that wouldn't work for our audience and here's how we should do it. I love how assertive she is and she's not afraid of conflict even more than me. And so I've more and more been like, oh my God, it's so awesome that Monica's now feels fully empowered to cool. ask these hard questions sometimes i'm like oh my god i'm so glad she just asked that is there also something too she's now now before the podcast came out people don't know who it is and exactly. now the podcast is so big it's like well now monica is her own beast that's right that's right yeah and that was i think the hard thing to that was the growing pain of it is like most people were learning there was a monica padman when they sat down and now generally anyone who comes on the show is probably gonna listen to at least one episode right. at this point in the past they didn't you know, like if a friend asked you to do their podcast, you're probably not going to listen to it. You're like, yeah, we're friends. I'll come to your podcast. You might not listen to it. 
I've had to um, learn how to handle because I used to I didn't think people watched my podcast I didn't think they didn't I just assumed they knew what it was right because right, right. Yeah. why wouldn't they I know what it is yes um and then there have been people on who it's it's just finding ways of getting and I've done it less because but animations and the bits and the tricks and the things I've had to like give myself a break uh-huh. just on that it's it helped other things accidentally yeah but like having people come over not knowing who I am uh-huh. me maybe even being a fan of theirs be like wear this to this you know, and just, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I don't even remember why I just brought that up. That's my. Um, you must love this too as a performer. My favorite moments are Pete Carroll arriving at the attic. He clearly has no idea why he's there. Someone on his team said this is a good outlet for you to be a part of, and he's walking up the stairs. And I catch him kind of looking at the person who scheduled this. Like, what the fuck are we? We're walk climbing this wooden staircase to an attic, and I, that to me, I'm like. Yes, he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't know what this is. Because why? You get to show him something? I get to win him over. Yeah. I get to like, and then there's a moment 20 minutes in where I see he's loving being here. Yeah. And then by the end of it, he like, he wants to hear the, I got to listen to this. Like that, I love that. That's like hitting on a girl uh-huh. cold. And if it goes well, no it idea goes what well. I could do. <laughs> yes. Um, we didn't talk about it at all, surprisingly. And, and I'll wrap this up with you. Um. Uh, but you know the Jason Kadem show. Oh yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Which I'd love to talk to you about sometime. And as you know, uh, are you done shooting it? We finished a week and a half ago. Okay. Um, and I want to, and I still want to get the three of us together. We have to. But uh, the number one and two most annoying cast members he's ever had. Probably together in one room. Do you think you're the most annoying? <laughs> I guess you'd had more seasons. <laughs> but I mean, just uh, busy. I think of some of the things he had to. Let me also say, Jason Kadams is the showrunner of my show who did Parenthood. Yes, yes. He created Parenthood and, and was the showrunner. And he's just epic. He's the most wonderful person to work for, probably. But I was, you know, I was 30, I don't know, I think 31 when I joined that show. 32, something in that range. I was on fire to get something I wrote on television. I wrote a fucking spec and gave it to him of the show, discounting the entire arc that the scene, you know. <laughs> and yeah, I put him in a position where he's got to be like, oh, I haven't read it yet. Okay. I mean, like, oh. oh yeah. yeah. I pitched him something, not that. <laughs> like, I want to be directing so much. I'm waiting to, add, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I pitched just, I pitched a, what if we, like a thing, which he could have, I just, no, not now. But he doesn't have that. He's too nice. Yes, he's very nice. So he he gracefully spent 30 seconds to let me know, well, I'll consider it, which I knew he's not interested. Don't worry about it. Yes. But, you know, you have to, I, I'm, you know, you got to learn how and when to pick your battles even more when somebody doesn't battle back. Yeah. He's yep. just too nice. Yep. And you don't want to take advantage of that. Yes. But, you, you know, what you got to learn to do with him is like, I don't think it, he's ever in person going to be comfortable taking on your worldview what makes him so great is he has such a specific perspective and he really shouldn't invite anyone else in on it i found him to be and not that this is but sorry that's him in the writer's room that's him as someone thinking about the show yet he has this incredible capacity to pass it off to you yes so what you have to do in my opinion is do whatever you think you need to do in a scene and show him already figured it out yeah i i mean this was like there was a yes I'm sorry yeah. to cut. Yes, that was like a look how much I think I, I think I figured it out. Maybe yes, I'll get better. Yes, but you don't want to go in. I think any suggestion sounds like perhaps a challenge, and just don't do that. Just do the thing you thought. I did it once. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, was, I did it once, and yeah, it'll never yeah, happen yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. And I over communicated my <laughs> discovery to him, which he didn't need. But like, yeah, yeah, great, great, great. Uh, but just stop talking about this and go do the thing. Yeah. I, I trust you, and I think you're brilliant. That's why I hired Jason. You. Go, I made a mistake. Go do that, and Absolutely. don't tell me about it. And if if I'm not getting what I need from you, I'll tell you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but while also thinking to myself, I'm telling you, this works. <laughs> like, in my, like I'm telling you, this one little thing. Um, yeah, but yeah. then do it, and they could use it. Yeah. Um, Mine's way more embarrassing. Mine is so much more embarrassing. I kind of thought what our show suffered from. Here's what I thought. I thought our show was so fucking good. Good, but you can't join our show mid-season because it's such a, a complicated, yeah. serialized uh, show as opposed to an episodic show where it's like friends. You can mm-hmm. you don't need to know anything prior to turning it on. And I was pushing for it to be a little more episodic because I just wanted people to be able to discover our show in the middle of the season. Because yeah, my thought was just like in a serialized thing, whatever we got at the beginning, that's that. 
Uh-huh. Because this was before everyone could really streamed everything and binged everything. So so my pitch was kind of like a standalone kind of episodic. Yeah. You don't need to know these people. This show, this episode will be funny enough. On You're being time. a producer now. Everything. I'm, I'm creating his uh-huh. show. Yes. <laughs> it's um, way more embarrassing. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten to this point before, but uh, we have to wrap up in the next less than 10 minutes be, okay. just because of my footage. Okay, great. Um, great. Uh, and... Uh, I mean, fuck. I mean, I'm putting, come back every day, please. I will. But, I will. I'm putting my seat up. I'm stowing my tray table. Yes. And I can't wait to watch you just gently put us on the runway. By the way. Generally, this is my job. And so it's, I'm glad it's landing on your shoulders. It? Yeah. That analogy that you used is something that uh, if, if you grab my girlfriend's uh, ass, I might not say anything. But if you tell her to put her, her seat up when it means nothing, I'm going to oh, throw a fit. Oh, same, 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 same. But uh, what on earth? What difference could a plane crash make if your seat's reclined or up straight? It, there's no way. Every time I've, I've gotten an answer and I ask every time uh-huh. is they are so unsure of the fact that if you jerk that you might hit your head on something. They don't even believe it. No one believes. Yeah. We and could go on forever. Let me also this. waste our time on this, this one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. This thing I'll do, uh-huh. but not until the person in front of me does it. Oh, interesting. I, I won't. And if they say that, I, I go like this because I'm not completely, you know, a man. I'll go like this. They say, uh, who do you think? I go. Mm, <laughs> and mm. I'll wait for them to ask the person in front of me because um, I don't want to be like this. Right. You don't want to see it right in your face. Um, I am. Um, let me be honest. I, I fly primarily first class. So it's like, I'm, not, I'm not putting anyone out by reclining my seat behind me. There's ample room for me to have my seat down without fucking the person behind me. Right. I am the second the guy floors the airplane back. I'm back. Because I know they can't get up to tell me no, and it's only during takeoff. And by the time they can get up, what are we going to say? I mean, I, I can't, I'm counting down the seconds to recline it. I'm counting down the seconds of this card ending. I'm so upset because I, I still want to tell you an anecdote. Tell me an anecdote. I'm uh, flying home from Cleveland. My arms are tired. Mm-hmm. And in first class, behind me is... Uh, and In first class, it's not a problem. Right. There's only one time it's ever a problem. And you can maybe, it's a long shot, but you can maybe guess when that problem would be. Who would have to be behind you for you to consider not reclining? An NBA player. Kareem (laughs) Abdul-Jabbar. Was it? Kareem was behind me. Oh, my God. It was after a playoffs playoffs game. We're both going back to L.A. Kareem is behind me. (laughs) And I, by the way, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the money yet. Yeah, right. I have enough money to be like, I'm going to treat myself. Yeah, this but, is a big to-do. But yeah, this was a look, like, I want to, I bought the meal, I want to eat it. Yes, yes. I get on the plane, fucking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's behind me. Oh my gosh. So, but I can't not recline. Mm, mm. So I, I I just, I sit down, I wait, and also he's being bothered. I see him being bothered. Sure. The pictures, and by the way, it's the it's this, it's this, as if they're hiding it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a lot yeah. of this, and I'm... Snipers. I, I need to talk to him, but it's not for the same. I'm not one of these fucking. <laughs> right, pe- I have a right. podcast, Kareem. Yes. Okay, yes, I could yes. dunk. I'm like you. Yes, I know many famous people. You're one of many famous people I know, Kareem. So when I turn around, I know like an opening joke on stage. I have to get him right away to trust me. Yeah. So my thoughts were I went, I just, you know, put, show my palms literally and said, I'm not quite sure how to handle this. Could we, could I go back a little? And could you tell me if I go back if it's not a problem? And he, he got disarmed immediately when it wasn't a naked picture. He goes, come back. Not a problem. Bring it back. Yeah. So, uh, but out of respect, it went halfway, even though he said it didn't matter. Oh, so I just want to say. What a guy. Yeah. He walks the walk. Yeah. So anyway, I, landing, Kareem. I got to tell you one funny. Please. Really quick. I don't want to out him, but there is a great restaurant we eat at. A friend of mine works at this restaurant. They label the tables both with table 23 and then positions. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, so that they can tell the food runner, go to 23, four, and that person will get their salmon and you're not getting the wrong item, right? So uh, Stevie Wonder was in the restaurant. He was eating there. And my friend gave a plate to be delivered to his table. And he said to the waitress he worked with, um, <clears throat> bring this to, to Stevie Wonder. And she said, what position? <laughs> and he said, position Stevie fucking Wonder. <laughs> It's a very small story, but I love it. Uh, <laughs> Position Stevie fucking wonder. I saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that same restaurant, I'm now realizing. There's that, the, the That's what it made me think of it, now that I think about it. How could you have been so blind? How could Can I, I say that? I feel so bad for those people who are famous for being, they're tall. Why do you feel bad for them? I just interviewed Chris Bosch. 
Oh yeah. And I thought you can't hide. Oh, there's no right, right. hiding. There's no fucking baseball cap and sunglasses. Yeah. That's going to make you not notice a six foot 11 human who being. Who said it? It was an NBA player who said it. Um, uh, I don't remember whom, but he said that you, they don't pay us to play. Oh, it was Rodman on the. I think it was Rodman on the uh, on the Last Dance documentary. Oh, okay. They don't pay us to play basketball. They pay us for everything in between. Yeah. And I thought that was like, yeah, basketball yeah. is why we do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the reason I, I I was bringing up my show uh, is because uh, in the like when you were saying it's like dating and like you see twenty minutes in this person like wow I want him over yeah was I'm doing this drama I've never done a drama before uh huh and uh. You know, there's some funny moments, but that's not my job. Yeah. And I was in a good mood. The scene uh, allowed for it. There was time in between because it was a complicated something. And I, I happened to have just opened up my ability to just make a joke to somebody. Yeah. And we're in a car, so it's micro every everybody on set could hear. And the first one hit. So, you know, then you're like, let me, I'm on stage finally. Yeah. And I was just very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not on screen, just like, and people came up to me, multiple people. It felt great. Uh-huh. People were like, I had, you're so funny. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And I arrogantly, but you know, or as you'd say untactfully, I had yeah. the thought of like, you have no idea. <laughs> you think that, <laughs> like you saw me hit a foul shot? Yes, yes, yes. And, and it was just like, it, and it made me, and that's when it got, not hard, but I had to like be Ooh, mature. Rain it in. Where I had to like, yeah. Yeah. Especially on a show about people who lack awareness. <laughs> slowly dole it out. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. it just felt so like, Oh, right. These aren't comedians. Yep. Yeah. You have no idea what I could do. Well, you know, when I travel and I'll hear a group of friends, every group of friends has the funniest member. That is not to say they are funny. Right. But they're the funniest member of that group. And so it is on their shoulders to provide all the comedy. <laughs> and I sometimes hear that at another table or something. I'm like, it's hard. It's hard for that. Like, if you're not a comedian and you are the appointed person to be spreading uh -huh. joy and laughs... It could be. Do gruesome. you think they appoint themselves the way that you do? Do you think everyone knows that? If they're not funny enough, do you think they still make it their mission? I think whoever is the funniest, which again is very relative. If you're like six morticians, morticianers, or whatever the fuck they're called, right? People. One who deal of them with is that. the funniest, and that might be a one on the funny spectrum. But it is now on their shoulders to always be the person who makes a joke in the situation. I want to be a one on the funny spectrum by by telling you a joke that I couldn't just do there because of the, the cadence. But okay. But here's my instinct, and we'll slip it in if it works. Okay. Uh, morticians are people who deal with the dead, but they never kill themselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm not performing it. I'm pitching it. I'm just pitching it. <laughs> Mort morticians are... Because they're not funny. They don't kill. But right. they, they, they know what it's like to... to eh, you'll keep, keep it, it in, but fast forward. Yep. <laughs> um, I got it. Can I... Pat us on the back for one thing. Yeah. This is the longest you and I have ever spoken without a misunderstanding. You know, it's funny you say that, but I don't, I don't know if I, I, you good. never know. I, well, it's not, it was just with you. It, you know, put your helmet down. It's no misunderstanding. It's okay. Yeah. So I know what you're saying. I, I'm going to take that as uh I think we said it last time I was here, but you would come visit me on chips and we would sit in my office and talk and, and you would leave and my assistant would say like, I do you, was that intentional? Like, did oh, you? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about this. Are you sure? I'm not sure, but I thought for whatever reason, at least since probably Chips. Yeah. Since after Jackie and I broke up, not because of it, but timeline. Because you have told me something similar before, but I always thought, no, it's okay. Dex knows now. But even today, you thought I was maybe punking you. Well, it was a, it was a possibility. Yeah. For sure. But, but in general, if you and I talk for an hour, there is 15 minutes of it where Fuck. I'm wondering... The card go out? No, to what you're saying. Although we literally have three minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, there will be f a 15 minute chunk per hour where I go, I wonder if we were talking about the same thing. <laughs> and now you know we <laughs> were. Go, by the way, I don't mind at all. I love it. It's something I've embraced. Like you would leave that office and I'd be like, yeah, I'm not sure. She would say, Are, did you, you, were you guys intentionally like, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, but it was so entertaining, right? She goes, I love it. I love when he stops by and you guys talk because I can't follow it. And I'm not sure if you guys can either. I'm like, I don't know if I am either. Right. It's great. That makes sense. Yeah. But this, I felt very dialed Good. in. Yeah. Well, for our last few minutes, I have a gift. And it's either for you or, it's for, or for me. And I'll explain if we, but open okay. it fast enough. Okay, great. <clears throat> Pressure's on. Um, I have two gifts. Oh, my God. Uh, is, this is rare that you're in sweatpants now. Oh, I thought you always wore shorts. Uh, sweatpants and shorts are the same to me. 
Okay. It's, it's uh, just a it's just comfort. not pants. You don't want any um, restriction on your legs. Yeah, I stopped wearing. I, I start, go first or is rude? Oh, yeah, don't open yet. Okay. I started wearing sweatpants more because of the seating. You could see legs, parts of my leg that uh, don't look. Okay. I haven't been doing legs. Okay. <laughs> um, so this, this gift is for you if that gift is for me. Now, what I mean by that is I am basically gifting you something yeah. and it's yours. Okay. Without, unless you give permission to give it to me. Okay. Okay. So okay. go ahead and open it. And okay. Uh, you're, y yeah. You know, it's fine. Okay. I can... Could I have this? <laughs> Could this be on my wall for all my podcasts? <laughs> or some of them? Dear Rick, you have the best buns in the business. She signed it on the podcast. You could show it to Cameron unless you don't want to. If that's oh, yours, it's course. yours. Of um, course. I'm curious when this was taken. I don't recall her doing a nude shoot. Is this her or is that her face? That's, that's her. I don't even it was recognize her. It was this. for, uh, I forgot the name of the magazine. Also, you know what I'm going to say, by the way, to my audience? In one minute and 12 seconds, the audio is about to be scratch audio. So you'll have to deal with it. Listen. This is great. What, what year do you think this was taken? This is so perplexing because she has a lot of boob here. I'm going to take a picture of this so I can ask her later and we can clear this up. And you know what? Because I feel like those are pregnancy boobs. But I ha I'm going to put in another card. I want you to have this. Are you sure? Absolutely. Well, you're missing I get out to see this every day. night. I get to see this every night. Um, uh, you're missing out. Uh, uh, well, no. Then you get to get your other gift. She looks fantastic in this. She looks great. Uh, yeah, her buns look really plump and her titties look huge. I bought it uh, clearly as a joke. Yeah. To, uh, but then I thought it might be a fun Easter egg to no. have in the back somewhere. I think that's great. I think Perfect. you should have that for sure. Um, if you if you have something of Betty, that I hope this is Betty nude. No, it's, it's okay. something else. But that's my gift to you. Okay. <clears throat> Hindsight. And all the things I can't see in front of me, Justin Timberlake. We're out of time. That's Dax Shepard from Armchair Expert. Visit him at DaxShepard.com, maybe. I'm Rick Glassman. Scoot Doo. Scoot Doo. Blabbity Blue. Scoot Doo. Oh, yeah. Scoot Doo.